welcome back The dreams were your ticket out Welcome back To that same old place that you laughed about Where the names have all changed since you hung around But those dreams have remained and they turn around Who'd have thought they'd lead ya? Back here where we need ya. Back here where we need ya. Yeah, we're teasing a lot, cause we got them on the spot. Welcome back. G'day guys and welcome back to the Supercoach Swordplay podcast. It is season four, episode five, and we are very, very excited tonight because we are welcoming back our brother, Janeth. He's been gallivanting overseas. Spills and I have been holding the fort just for the last couple of weeks, but brother, that intro was just a little bit of love for you because you know how much we do adore you. The whole community does. We have been missing you. Uh, Spills, we'll get to you in a sec, mate, but uh, Janeth, how are things, brother? Welcome back, buddy. Thank you, boys. Glad to be back on. It was, yeah, it was, it was a bit weird listening to you guys just um, taking the taking the podcast solo without me. But oh, you guys did an awesome job. I was listening it. I was listening to it um, heading from Australia into Italy and then back um, back from Paris into London. So you know, it's good listening to just to just pass the hours by whilst looking at looking at the Alps or some greenery, you know, it was an awesome trip. Really, I'm not here to give travel advice, but I've, I've, lit, I've written up like a diary here. Venice. Oh, very nice. Venice and Lucerne in Switzerland. You, you just have to be there. Have to be there to see it. I will, I'll just have a parting shot at Paris very quickly. Ooh, okay. Now, go. I've got some, I've got some inside information here, all right? One. <laughs> The Olympic ceremony, opening ceremony, will be on water. So they're going to actually do the Olympic ceremony on the Lake Cien. I think that's how you okay. say it. So it's not going to be in an Olympic stadium. And the second thing is don't don't um, be surprised if some athletes turn up late to their events. That's the inside word is the traffic is horrendous. Wow. We got okay. a we have a we have a pedestrian crossing, green, we walk through it and we get honked at. It's like so we got cars honking at us. They go into intersections when it's red. It's it is preposterous. But whatever you do, <laughs> Paris. That's my early rant. Is I don't know. It's not overrated, but it is not. It is not fun as a tourist if you're only spending a couple of days there. I feel like it would be a bit overrated though. Like you said, all the movies and stuff it looks pretty rosy, but the way you described it, what a nightmare. Oh, I, I don't think I don't think I can handle it. To be honest, oh, it is. But you but, see. Venice and Venice and Lucerne, on the other hand, are much more laid back. It's but not Venice more so in the sort of the alleyways in the little canals, but Lucerne is genuinely the most laid back place I've ever been to. It's lovely. There's no Happy river weekend. rage, is there, Janet? No one's no no two canoe. There's no two canoe. River rage. It's just yelling at each other. Not like not quite. Busy. They're they're quite friendly. The Italians with each other. Mm. I like it. Well, I've, I've had a bit of river rage with my little man. fella lately. I'll tell you what, he's been raging. He's been uh, shocking lately. But uh, welcome back, brother. We we have Thank missed you, you very, very much. much. Uh, Billsy, how about yourself, brother? Uh, been spending a little bit of time with the missus there and uh, things are going well. Things are going strong, which is good. And I'll tell you what, uh, your boys on the weekend, mm -hmm. pretty decent win, mate. Pretty decent win. Yeah, it was. Um... You were telling me before, Dow, all, all three of us boys got a win on the weekend. Me, you, and Brentos, but unfortunately for Jana, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they, they finally good. they finally yeah. lost one, and it was probably the yeah, reality. That's got to be the upset of the year so, so far, surely. Uh, who saw that coming? I can't. I believe tipped that Adelaide. What's wow! That? Did you was that like just some reverse psychology what thing? Was, was that, that genuine? We, we always drop one of these games. Adelaide had nothing to lose. They were just going to throw everything at us. And oh, also, um, good, yeah. Yeah. That's I'm a bit, really I'm a bit area of tipping for Carlton. You, I don't know if any of you boys do this, but in a 50-50 game, you're like, oh, if I, t if I tip the other team, at least there's something to look forward to if the Blues lose, you know? Well, uh, yes, glass half full or the half empty, half full, sort of but... in the middle somewhere approach. Yeah, I like it, Janet. I like it, mate. <laughs> You know, yeah. I'm going well, boys. I, I will just add, I am pretty sick at the moment. So if I sound a bit 
weird on the camera that that's why i got a bit of a block nose so i'll try and um i'll try and buff it out but I yeah always want to always want to get up to the get up for the podcast that wasn't going to stop me so yeah it's good to be back um it's good to have you back Janet. it's good to have all three of us you, back talking super coach again and um gee we got some issues this week what do we do trade wise and captaincy wise i think this is going to be one of the weeks where it really separates a few teams i think a lot of teams will, will hit shambles this week but a lot of them will prevail and and climb up the ranks because yeah who how can you possibly know what trades are right do we do we hold hows because he's going to make money or do we trade him because he's got to buy and we've got dpp problems we'll talk about that very shortly but um this will be a really interesting week boys and i'm um, yeah really really keen to dabble in the super coach coming into what is round six and dpp as well coming this week too which is just so bloody exciting um can't come soon enough for my team i think i speak for many so yeah should be good beautiful absolutely mate and now look before we get into our round reviews you will notice on uh two thirds of our heads at the moment we tried to get one up to spills today had someone going through bendy gay but couldn't quite get it but uh if you notice up here now, I must admit, I haven't got the best head for modelling. Uh, I've got more of a head for radio, but we have a bit of a merch drop. Very, very exciting here, boys. Uh, a lot of the credit does go to Janeth for setting up the website and basically everything because, let's be honest, he is the brains of the operation. But we do have the official sword play beanies in stock. So you can see on the head there, love little logo with... Uh, Got the sword play up there, nice colours. Look at that close up there. Yeah, they look Janet. mean. They look so good. Oh, don't they? Don't they? Uh, cheetah, good. cheetah team wear. Shout out to them because they have done a phenomenal job. If you don't mind, so uh, we are waiting. Probably, I'm saying about one more day, Janet, uh, until we can uh, make our official opening or, or our official launch of Cut the website, the where uh, you'll be able to go in and purchase one of these beanies for yourself now. I've had a fair few messages about them. I think they'll go pretty quickly, but we will be able to order some more and uh, get get plenty of stock. And uh, yeah, very, very excited. We've got more than the beanies, though. There's going to be hoodies, tees, and I'll sing them, boys, even some singlets. Probably not the time of year at the moment, but <laughs> for Spilsy, who likes to spend a little it's bit still... of time in the gym and uh, work oh, on the pipes there, it, maybe a sort of play, uh, singlet. <laughs> Spilsy, maybe a good advertisement there, mate. Everyone will go, geez, look at the guns. Oh, look at that. So what's the sword play pot, I wonder? So, uh, sword Spilsy play pot, you smugglers, uh, maybe DR. The, oh, how's that? The, he's talking the now. Sword play, the, maybe the sword play budgie smugglers. Wouldn't that be a free advertisement? <laughs> Spilsy walking down Jeez. the beach with budgie smugglers. Uh, we'd, we'd have a few extra views, I think, Spilsy. They may be a little bit disappointed to see you fully clothed unfortunately uh on the podcast here mate but uh we are getting a little bit raunchy let's get back to this uh merch <laughs> drop but yeah we will have the official opening very very soon with a swordplay website as well so super stoked about that bloody comfy as well i tell you what coming right up for winter and uh they will not so get good. better than this beanie absolutely yeah, absolutely they look unbelievable the boys, don't they? oh super they've done they've done a wonderful job i should um, actually leave the link down the bottom there for peter I've done a phenomenal job thank you very much cam and the team there but boys let's get into this super coach it is time to do a bit of a rapid round review we've got some visuals up this week i'm going to continue that from now on and a shout out to our spotify listeners as well great to have you guys on board as always and uh thank you for all the people left a review i think we've got about 10 reviews there five out of yeah, five stars awesome. each and every one of them legends if you don't mind so thank you for everyone that does that but uh look spilsy you're first in line here mate so uh we're going to get you to go through your round five rapid round review yeah third on the podium this week boys yeah i am the loser for for round five bit of a shame but yeah you two absolute goats it's hard to it's hard to keep up it was a bit of bit of carnage but i did miss a lot of it jack Steele, boys what a bloody what a, what an antipod um yeah i was close to picking him you can't have them all you can't get them all right it's been really tough to get him in because it's been so much other problems in the side so yeah he's got a lot to do with it which is a real pain um but my trades for the week well i bought in flanders closey and martin and i can't remember specifically who i traded out it might have been like 
um, Sam Berry and yeah, uh, Grundy and Jordan. So I don't think I went. I don't, don't think you could go wrong with those trades. Real, real obvious ones. So yeah, climb up the ranks a little bit, which is good. But yeah, nowhere near as good as you boys. And um, yeah, kudos to yourself, Jenna, for Yeah, one point nine k leading absolutely by a country mile on this podcast. So yeah, oh, leading geez, this not crowd. a country mile. <laughs> yeah, oh no, it, it actually isn't. Like you were saying before, it's that's only close. about. 140 points total or something like that so there really isn't much in it and it's a long season so hopefully we can we can come good my my biggest problem this week though is do i trade house or do i hold him i think the obvious thing to do is hold him because he's got a 20 break even he's going to make a lot of money regardless of his buy but to me holding him i've got sanders and graham on the bench and then a donut in defense where you know, trading out house, I could flip Dacos back and then sort of fix that. So I'm in a little bit of a situation where do I, yeah, trade house or do I go Clark or McCurch? I'm not really sure what to do, but I'm sure we'll um, we'll discuss all this furthermore in the podcast. But I, I think I speak for many there. I know DR's in the same sort of uh, conundrum. So oh, yeah, yeah, we'll mate. address yeah. that. We'll address that later on. But other than that, boys, I think we're traveling pretty well and hopefully i can catch up dogs uh, Beautiful, you too, mate. well I, I might jump in next because i'm uh, next on the chart here. so 2029 for me this week look at that total score it's, it's such a nice round number isn't it Ten thousand five hundred right on the dot not ten thousand five hundred and one like right on the dot it, it just looks good so uh yeah top one percent ranking at the moment so 2272 Certainly not complaining with that. And look, if, if you're anywhere around the top 5 to 10% at this stage, I think you're going to be fine. Just make sure that you trade well. And if you do that, there's plenty of time to come back. If you look at the difference between us in, in rankings there, Janet, there's almost 300 odd there. Yeah. And if you look at total points, it's really not much at all. I was listening to the Super Coach boys and uh, they were comparing their ranks and total points. And there's really nothing in it. Like 120 points this year is massive absolutely massive at the moment so if you're getting your captains right you're winning a bit of rookie roulette that could really be making the difference between the top one to maybe three four percent at the moment so pretty happy there i brought in nick martin last week into my side after trading him out it was very painful but suppose he hit the ton can't complain there obviously went uh, early on closey as well i just thought he's going to be a must-have trade in this week anyway so if you're ever going to go early i think he's pretty safe uh, so pretty happy with those trade outs. It was Sam Berry that went for me along with Brody Grundy. And uh, like, I'll say him around with you as well, just very quickly before I pass the baton on to Janeth. It's like, you know, you trade out Martin Tun, Fisher Tun, Young Tun. So you can expect a big score from Grundy this week. But it's like Sam Berry gave me the equivalent equivalent of that almost, like a 50 <laughs> plus quarter, like quarter as a sub. Oh, I don't like, really. Come on, just a little slap in the face to DR just before he goes, <laughs> even as a sub goal winning uh performance uh all yeah. rest, but it always happens I'll, I'll, it's always I'll the same right now seeing seen the back of him <laughs> well he did it against my mob as well even better cherry on well top. that's right you felt a little bit pain janet but looking at this uh score mate doesn't look like you're going through too much pain in super coach at the moment let's hear about your review mate well i'll, I'll just provide a little update um on my team since the last podcast so couple of weeks ago, boys, you, you sort of helped me get Jack Steele over Took. I was actually in Florence that day and I was trying to oh, figure out. Nice. Just went to, uh, all right, on the bus home, it's like, Jack Steele, he, he's the guy, right? And he's been the guy. He's gone back-to-back -back 140s. What what a jet. Went early on Closey. So last, nice. When it, yeah. So I think well, it was a Steele and Darcy the week before that, and then... Yeah, um, brought in Nick Martin, so I think all three of us swallowed our pride a little bit. Wow, we did it's too. always <laughs> it's always a bit difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, happens to the best yeah. of us though. That's it. That's it. And that's when right. early and closey, yeah. which it's almost like Super Coach Cardinal sin number one. Don't trade a rookie in early. But this is the this is the first time I think I've seen a rookie where you trade them in early and they go gangbusters. One twenty four. That's mental. Like you just yeah, it is. you just don't expect that from a rookie, let alone a one oh two K rookie. That's genuine. You could start him as a loop and you you may still have him in your team. Like Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. I think this week, I think, you know, yeah. yeah. 
you know what, when boys? When you see that, though, like, yeah. when you see one or two K rookie score 108 in his first appearance, I think the risk of going early on him yeah. is pretty down low. Like, it's yeah. not going to really... So, yeah, what a bloody... What a rookie, man. The thing Crazy. is, I reckon this this week, boys, we'll figure out how many teams in the competition are still playing. Because if he's not in every team that's active by the end of next week, you're not playing super coach correctly. No, yeah. 100%. 100%. I saw some sort of stat, though, that he yeah. is on record to possibly overtake Errol Gordon as the yeah. most money earned in a single week by a rookie. It's like one... 20k or something like that. Just is it 90 80 has to score? Yeah. I think something yeah, like that. I don't that know, the Errol went back yeah, it was one of those two numbers. I um, think he can do it. Imagine negative that. 170 break That's even. Mental. That's mental. And boys, yeah. How's this? I actually work with a girl who was dating Sam Closey before he moved up to Gold Coast, and yeah, she couldn't have talked him up anymore. Jeez. And apparently, he's like. The most modest bloke ever. Like oh. he was saying after the first oh, week, good. like I didn't even really play that well. Like just want to see how I go. I want to make sure I can just keep holding my spot. So apparently he's like just a really cruisy bloke as well. So yeah, Jeez, got a little bit of inside info there, Bill. On him. Yeah. What's that? Give us some more, mate. Yeah. So um, <laughs> yeah, this this chick, buddy, make um, yeah, she was telling me, oh, I've I watched my. My partner make his debut on the weekend, and I'm like, you, "You're joking!" Like in AFL, like yeah, yeah, he, he just just got off a, a VFL list, and he's yeah, he's um, he's at the Gold Coast Suns, and it's not Sam Closey, is it? He's massive in Supercoach right now. Like, she's like, "Yeah, he is, yeah," <laughs> but like we unfortunately we had to separate because well, she's got like this chick studying uni, obviously where I am, and too much commitment she can't move up to gold coast so i think they're just really close mates but yeah she couldn't have talk, she couldn't have spoken any oh. highly of him just apparently he's just such a good bloke and just a jet football player i'm like that's enough for me yeah i'll go early that's on enough him. but how good is that that's like, enough. He's, like, met his, he's met his ex missus that is enough for me right that's <laughs> enough for me <laughs> done no research needed let's, let's just jump on who knows but and he's modest as well. So, yeah, he was worried whether or That's not he was going to get a game in the second appearance. Um, there's no doubt he's get he's, he's not getting dropped after that one. There's no way. And didn't he That's back awesome. it up? So, yeah, That's he's going to be one of the all-time great Supercoach rookies that we ever see. Hopefully. So bring him in if you haven't already. Good point, Janeth. This will reveal how many Supercoach sides are actually serious, his ownership. I reckon it will be around 60 or 70%. It's got to be got to be a minimum minimum 60 70 uh, just, just a quick yeah. one to finish up my round review i think i was very lucky to have vc'd gorn because it almost felt like everyone after him you that had was to a legit captaincy just to. candidate just fell over yeah and i think it's time true. we took harry sheasel seriously as a captaincy choice maybe not this week with the fin tag but gee he looks good he is junking That's it up right now the shees Oh, he's yeah, good. he's a talk about a painful anti-pod, uh, very, very oh. painful anti-pod there. But uh, here we go, boys. Top of the pod at the moment is oh. the Professor, rank 1,155, total score 10,514. I'm sitting I'm there just below 10,500, 2,222 for an overall rank. And then uh, we have Spilsy there. And, mate, when you look at that, those total points, it's, it's a close. it's a rookie roulette. Good captain score away, mate. Ten thousand three hundred ninety four. Very very respectful rank there. Five thousand eight hundred and fourteen. So all travelling a lot better than what we were at this stage last year, boys. So uh, yeah, that's pretty amazing. positive at the moment, boys. Yeah. Pretty yeah. positive. Kudos, Dave. Right, well, doodles, by the way. Jeez. The oh, production, the the production value we've got here. The yeah, the quality good. of it. <laughs> Just magnificent from <laughs> AFL Doodles, and that's He's why I've got the Twitter right. handle there. Now, uh, this, yeah, this is oh, something mate, I What's going on here? With. What is this? <laughs> Talk about what is this? <laughs> Talk about uh, quality. I don't think this is really it. I actually uh, took a little selfie before, did a bit of magic uh, with removing the background here. I was wearing the iPods in the ear, so half my ear is missing here. Um, I thought that the back thing here could actually look like a bit of a hoodie. It's actually like part of the head in this cartoon. 
But um, yeah, I thought it looked like a bit of a hoodie or a backpack or something that I could just roll with. Uh, it was it was a, a one and a half minute job. So sorry about this, guys. But uh, we have a bit of a visual here. Now, you can see here, we're going to keep a track of the rant. So I've already gone off on Nick Martin. I would have had multiple pictures of Bevo here, Spills, because we both teed <laughs> off uh, on a few occasions, but just the one there. Uh, Kane Corns, obviously, you had a crack at the volcano, and obviously, champion data for their handling of the yep. Darcy Wilson, Tom Powell, et cetera, scores. But, boys, this week, you can see the photo there. Now, this is this <laughs> is not going to be a rant, right? Because I'm, I'm genuinely entertained by this, and I'm actually not annoyed, and I haven't actually told you guys the, the story. I've changed my rant and gone with the story because this legitimately happened to me after school tonight and uh shout out to the blind legend now the blind legend actually donated uh twenty dollars to one of my videos the other day so thank you very much brother so with that with that 20 there mate with that lobster i headed into the bp servo after school tonight um rather than going down getting petrol tomorrow uh in the morning i thought have a bit of an extra sleep in do it on the way home before we get into the potty and all the rest and uh, I'll get some petrol. And uh, so filled up the car and then went inside. And, you know, it always gets me when you've got the fridge air with the drinks there, you know, the Gatorades, five bucks one or two for 650. It's like, God oh, damn it, take my 650. <laughs> or I'm not going to give one away for dollar fifty. Anyway, so um, I've got my two Gatorades there. I'm waiting to pay for the fuel. And there's probably two or three people just in front of me. Um, you know, I'm just looking around at, I don't know, the nuts and the banana bread, whatever was there. I don't know. I don't even eat banana bread. I wasn't interested. I'm just, you know, away with the fairies at this stage after a big day at work. And then uh, sort of out of the corner of my eye, th this fella comes up and he was in a school uniform. It wasn't um, one of the local school ones. Obviously, somewhere, somewhere I don't know, maybe half an hour-ish away because I'm pretty good with the schools around my area. But obviously got the bus and uh, I had a meeting tonight, so I was a little bit later. And he comes up to me and he goes, are you super coach for DR? And uh, yeah, I got a little bit of head wobble, like, uh, you know, a young fan, a young fan. I said, oh, yeah, mate, you know, how you going, all the rest. And he goes, well, this is dead set, right? True story. He goes, well, you should call yourself Super Coach Duh, because who the hell would boost for Jesse Hogan? Start with Nick Martin. <laughs> And I'm like, what a double take. And this kid's like bolted out, right? I've sort of not followed him, not, not run over to him or anything, but sort of the glass window. So I'm sort of like, went Why? around and he's got like three other mates there that have like, and they must have dared him or something. He's seen me go in there and he's, he must have told them. They look back, they saw me and then they do the old point and like do the bolt and run off. And so I got absolutely trolled, absolutely hammered. I reckon they were probably only in year seven. They weren't the, the biggest... Oh high schoolers that you've ever seen but they came in old mate i reckon's been dared to do it hopefully he got a couple of bucks out of it from the boys or a couple of pokemon cards or something there but uh yeah i, I actually did get a bit of entertainment from it that the people around me didn't quite know what was happening i didn't explain it they didn't ask me in the end just a little bit of an awkward hello <laughs> How you going type thing. But uh, yeah, shout out to Brian Legend for that lovely donation, mate. Uh, you did get me a couple of lovely Gatorades there. Um, probably tomorrow I, I don't might go to a different servo if I need to uh, get a cold one. But uh, yeah, shout out to you, young men. Obviously, you, you play super coach. You're probably watching now. And uh, and yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Kudos. You got me. You got me. A bit of friendly banter, boys. What a roller coaster well that was. Would have been. Well done. Hey. You'll be feeling so good oh. about yourself when you get when you got recognised. I was I getting know if ready I told for selfie. You, <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> you remember when I, I went, to, went to the footy, I think it was like last year or something, and some guy was getting on, like off the tram, or might have been getting off, like on the tram, and I was getting off, and he, like he said he recognised me. He's like, "Well, you spill super coach," and it was like a, it's like a ten second conversation because the doors were shutting, but I was rattled because what a small world. And it feels like you don't you don't always like the limelight, but internally it does feel good because it's like oh people are starting to recognize recognize me. So it must have felt really good for yourself. But then he's just thrown some dirt in your eyes by saying a bag in the yeah. out of your trade, like, like the oh, highs and the what lows. A drive what a power move. <laughs> it was, it was. It, as I said, shout out to the young man. You know, he obviously plays the game of super coach and I love seeing uh young people involved. But but come on, mate, give me a fair bake there. <laughs> Um, but uh -huh. it is what it is, boys. Yeah, you, you live with these things, but uh, uh yeah, not, not a recognize. rant because it, oh, oh, yeah, well, I wasn't upset, you know. So, this isn't a rant, more of a story, but uh, yeah, kudos to you, young. There's man. only one thing to rant about DR, and he's already in it, so why are we bother? We can, we can only rant so much, so 
I'm not even going there. And still, we've been vindicated because I don't know if you heard the volcano. And that, look, we know volcanoes had a, an issue with Bevo for a long time, but I think it's getting real now, mate. It is getting real. Um, we heard Caro yeah. talk about it the other night. So uh, Everyone I think wants we may have head. started something here, <laughs> Spills. I'm going to claim this from the rant, the famous uh, Spills rant that uh, you had with Bevo the other day, mate. But, uh, boys, rant <laughs> slash story over. Janeth, once again, mate, uh, and this is why we have missed your beautiful work when you have been overseas, mate. We have the rookie data dump going into round six. We've got some yeah, big names here, mate, and there's a little bit to discuss this week. So, uh, mate, what do you want to start off with here with the round six rookie data dump? Well, this is, again, just a little appended version of the full one, which you can find at the third underscore man up. But we'll just start off with really just having a look at the two must buys, Will Graham, Sam Closey. I think they're both pretty much locked into their into the one team, the Gold Coast side. Closer looks to have locked in a wing. <clears throat> Flanders looks to have gone to half back. Not sure how settled that is, but Will Graham is playing that sort of fourth inside mid role. <laughs> David Swallows out out of the team. It it feels as though these two will provide the cash gen we need in the coming weeks, especially with Graham like fourteen tackles. I was tracking it on the airplane. <laughs> And he was on 23 or something at, at halftime and he finishes on 91. You're like, oh, yeah. I think it's 91 or something like that. And you're like, geez, this guy, this bloke can play. Like, and I'm not sure he's a fieldable option, especially at Sydney, SCG, tough matchup. But I think that we should all be getting on him this week. Uh, I guess the other thing, the big one is to combine or not to combine. So I think maybe if we want to bring that segment Ooh. up, mate. Um, because I'll just I'll just um, preface this by saying that next week we'll probably have five. We're gonna probably gonna have five rookies on the bubble, and I'll just list them out here. Uh, so we'll have um, sorry, uh, we'll have Big Inuan, Blake Jury, Hugo Garcia, James O'Donnell. Uh, I've left one off here because he's not playing this week. Kane McAuliffe, mm. um, and also yeah, the those those are the main five. Possibly Henry Hustwet, just because. You know, he's he's just in a bit of no man's land in that Hawks team at the moment. So possibly six downgrade options next week. So is it worth is it worth going, for instance, Combin this week if you're gonna plan for uh big and new and next week? Just something to keep in mind. So let's hear your thoughts, boys. Well, can I just start off by saying I, I am so on the fence about Combin, it's not funny. Like I'm really, really on the fence. And this is the issue for me, brother. I've got a little bit of a plan in mind and I've really, and I've done it just the old school way with the old pen and paper. Shout out to Cutter, a great man that does that as well. I'm sure we'll have a question in the mailbag like we do every week from the uh, from the fantastic fella is uh, Cutter. But um, one thing that, that I'm struggling with this week is I really want to make a double downgrade. I really want to double yeah, down. So do I. The issue is this, is that I've got Closey. Graham's a must-have. So Graham's an absolute lock every day of the week. It's it's the most obvious trade for me this week because I'm assuming that most have gone close already. So the issue then becomes, do you go Combin this week or do you risk going early on someone like a Biggie, like a McAuliffe? Mm. You, you listed them just Garcia. before there, Jenna. I think he's, he's the one there. Garcia. See, this is, this is the, well, that's the big question for me, right? Is that, that like for me? He's a high chance of of if he, he doesn't start as a sub, possibly being subbed yep. off. We don't know what what happens a week after I that. I just that. I'm finding it so dangerous to go early. And it if is, yeah. Common comes in this week, I'll pretty much know if he goes around a 75. I'm at least making 70k just to start off with that boost. That's the big issue for me. Like if Biggie was on the bubble this week, I'm not looking at Common. Yep. Like it's it, Biggie every day of the week and twice on Sundays. But am I willing to pay an extra 100K just for the security That's of it. knowing that there's going to be that price rise? Or am I willing to take the risk this week on going someone like a biggie so then I'm able to possibly get a couple of extra rookies a week after? I'm really not too sure. So that's a big question for me. I was, I was speaking, I was on the live stream with SDS, uh, shout out to that great man the other day. And we we're talking about four particular players in the side. So it's Toby Pink, Dawson, uh, we've got who are we talking about now? Maybe Combin and Yuan. 
Combin and Ewan. Yeah. So out of those four, we've only seen two play in the one side, haven't we? Yeah. Dawson was out the other week, but that was due to injury. Biggie obviously came into that side. Now, Combin was in the week before. So we probably agreed that we don't see Pink coming in anytime no. soon because he's not banging down the door. I've got some decent locked. depth there. You're so you're saying, security. Okay. I reckon okay. you're paying for job security in this case. So out of the four, Janeth, okay, so yeah. let's take Pink out. So out of the three, yeah. you're saying that you believe Combin's Combin got the has best. the best. He has the best job security. He, okay. was, he was added as their, as their yeah. main key yeah. defender before he got injured in the preseason as well. Okay, so that then leaves your Dawson and your Biggie. Um, because Biggie's a big part of this conversation for me. I think it's almost part of the same conversation, Common and Biggie. So do you have a bit of a gut feel? Um, okay, A, whether or not you can see any world where both of so we're assuming Combin's in. Do you see a world where Combin and the two other blokes play? Or do you think it's it's simply two? And if that's the case, who's who you're pairing with Combin as your first choice? Who do you think they're going to go with, mate? Well, I didn't. I just have to say that I didn't get the chance to watch this Geelong game. Obviously, flying and all that. To me, yeah. Combin and Nguyen play a very, very similar art type of players. They're both intercepting defenders. They don't have the defensive traits that Dawson does have. And so, for me, thinking that. Combin and Neon both played ahead of Pink when Pink was healthy. I, I, I haven't heard anything about injuring you. So clearly Pink's not in the equation. He's fourth cab off the rank. Yeah, yeah. There is a world which I don't know what Alistair Clarkson's thinking because every every blind man's dog knows that the north back line is too small. Like you've got no pure defenders in there. Sheasel doesn't defend. Fisher doesn't defend. Luke McDonald's passed it. And you got Combin and Nguyen. Cause one technically, yeah. Jonas, like in terms yeah. of lockdown. Yeah, that that's the thing. But like, Cause undersized as well. But mm. so Cause locked in. He's 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 on big money. He's not going to move. So it's two of Combin, Nguyen, and Dawson. Combin's locked in as well. And then that's the tough part. Dawson's out two to three more weeks. If Nguyen plays well enough, he could sort of displace Combin. But are you willing to take that risk? It's really hard to say. I think. That's why you just got to wait a week on you, and you just got to know that Dawson. You got to see another good game from him because we've seen with these North rookies that, geez, their their scoring fluctuates rapidly. Even even amongst the defenders, we saw with McKercher as well that he wasn't he wasn't showing general consistency in his scoring in that halfback role. It's just it's really hard to say it. I personally am not going Combin this week. The price is too much for. A score the the one twenty nine he got right. He had, he had he, like the stats and everything look really good, but it's only going to be in the price cycle for this week, and then it's yeah. You get that you get that sort of quick fix on your cash gen, but then if he drops another seventy, it's it's just going to be another Massimo situation where you're just hoping for another spike score. Otherwise, his cash gen's dead before it even started. Fair enough. All oh, right. So, if would would you choose them potentially, Janice? If you still got question marks, if you're in my position, maybe a bit of a selfish question here. Just just go the one trade. Just get your Graham in this week. Maybe look to get a bit of an advantage on those that have gone maybe a boost this week and get a couple of extra trades up my sleeve. It de- it really depends on win. how you view Combin. You, it's it, it really comes down to that, end of the day. Yeah. And I think it also depends on how strong your forward line is. So if you're yes, playing, I reckon if you're, if you're still playing a Cadman on field. I, I that was going to be the his, point that his... I was going to allude to, DR, because that would yeah. probably be me. Well, it most definitely will be me if I didn't bring a common. And I, I think the more expensive the pick the less money he's got to make. Like a 123K rookie, you probably want to make 150K where like someone in the early 200s, I think you'd be happy with with uh, like 100K. Like you look at Massimo, I, I, I think he's done his job. Like he hasn't made 150K. I don't think, I don't even think he's made 100. But he's been good on-field points in a role where you're going to bleed. So like I think Common's going to put 10 points on Cadman or Berry. And he's got that big score in his system. 
and he's relatively cheap and he's a forward. So, you know, forwards are pretty precious. And I don't want to be that guy that fades him when he just turns out to be just a pretty mm. fair and reasonable selection. So I think he's a I think he's a low risk, high reward player, because worst case scenario, maybe he makes seventy K, you you still trade him out for three hundred K. I mean it's not it's not like you're stuck with a one fifty K rookie. So I just think you see how he goes. But I would much rather go Common who's on the bubble and then get another look at Biggie, who is the only base price rookie like out of all these blokes, because I just feel like a Garcia, perfect sub candidate. I mean, yeah. he's playing that mid mid role, but he's definitely, I reckon, the lowest of that mid pecking order at St Kilda. So if they're going to yeah. sub anyone out, fuck, it, it's him for sure. So I, I'm not comfortable with Garcia, and I think he's someone that could definitely turn out to be a really good selection. But I'm not game enough for it. Yeah. I'd just rather. And next week, I want to have someone to downgrade to as well. So if you go Biggie this week, who are you going down to next week if Garcia is not your guy? It's 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 all of a sudden looking pretty dire. So I don't know if Coleman's necessarily going to be a good pick, but structure-wise, he really does fix a lot of things up for me personally. So I'm happy to run with it. Let me put this to you then, just real quick, because I know some people are going to be in this dilemma, because now we're looking at these fallen premiums. So I just did a quick quick sort of run-through. We'll, we'll come back to this later, but we'll get... We'll probably have Tom Stewart bottom out at 557k next week. Caleb Sarong at 620k next week. Tom Green at 590ish k round eight. Uh, Petrarch at 580k in round nine. If that 104k difference between Combin and Nguyen is your only avenue to be able to get to one of these guys in two trades, would you go Nguyen early? Would you skip Combin and get Nguyen in next week and just do the one trade like Di is saying? How? What? What are your thoughts there? I'm going double down 200-odd K uh, because maybe i got my, my Don's goggles on, but I don't want to be that guy that said, well, I wish I picked Zach Merritt, and I don't care if I've got to pay up 670. I want him so bad. He's just got that run coming up. He's going to be a, a, just a super pod, and I think he can get me back into the game. So but, he's but my man next still. week. That's the thing, Spills. So say that the only way you can get Merritt next week is if you go new and over Combin. Would you do that? So not in your oh. situation, but in someone else's situation where they need that 100K for upgrade in a coming week. Because it, no. is a, it is a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but I wouldn't want to go early on Biggie. Oh, it's, it is tough. I, I think if Biggie puts together another score, I think you just got to gotta watch him again because it's a small sample size. They did rack it up a bit in defense there. Against Geelong, I mean, look at Sheasel, like Common, Biggie, they all they all had plenty of it. So, I feel like he's one where you just assess it because uh, right, uh, it's a tough just, one. It, it's very team based, but. Can I just throw yes, a question sir. at both yeah. of you then? Yeah. If you had to go early on a rookie this week, we've got Biggie, Drury, Garcia, Burgoyne, O'Donnell. Biggie. Who are you going early on if you have to? I'm not and, saying you're not. We don't necessarily want to. Is there someone I've missed? And Connor Sullivan. So that's someone that we... Connor O'Sullivan. We, I didn't add to this table, but okay. the long rookie yeah. defender. Uh, Janet, who... So we're not advocating necessarily going early, but if you were in a position where you had to go early, you're not interested in Combin, you've already maybe... Well, you're locking in mm. your Graham or your closer. You need you need someone else. Who who are you going to take the punt on, mate, if, you're, if you were in that position yourself? Hard call. Yeah. Have you got a gut feel? I'd go... New one. I don't like you it. Go, you have to. 100%. Yeah. Like, yep. Okay. By a country mile. Uh, You're strong on that spills. I, if want, you, if you know I just early. want another yeah. week of data because why not? We did it with Graham. Yeah. I mean, yeah. could have gone early on him too. Could have gone double down with Graham as well as yeah. um, Closey last week and you would have been in a good spot. I think but, there's a slight difference though, spills, is that. You either go Combin this week and New and next. I don't see a world where you can go both. Or you go, like, it's it's really difficult to go both Combin and New and because you only have so many forward spots left, right? And Combin yeah, may get DPP, think, so it may help. But that's another thing. I think to a Barry or a Cadman could make way, though, for them. Because yeah. Cadders is looking pretty 
maxed out by next week. Only looking to make yeah. like ten k if he hits his projected. So I think Cadman's definitely someone that can go. Like Barry's done his job. There are a few forwards that I think you can get get rid of yeah. pretty much. So I don't know. It's a tricky one. Yeah, Better get rid well, of the house, uh, but. I think with Combin, and if you're going early, a lot of it's on your gut feel, your projections, your predictions. Like we're not Clarko, we've we've got no. All, all we can do is make it, I suppose, an educated opinion, or do our best to look at the numbers, look at the competition for spots, and then make a judgment based off that. If you've got a bit of a different gut feel, or if you're really strong on someone, then then go for it. Don't let us talk someone out of someone or talk into someone. But, um, yeah, it, it's it, it's difficult. Whenever you're going early, it's going to be a risk. I think Closey last week was just a very special case. Uh, mm -hmm. I think most of us would never agree. happened, so, essentially. Uh, that's, yeah, that's Unicorn right. in Supercoach <laughs> term. Yeah. I, I think, I honestly think that Common is just such low risk. Worst case, like, I reckon he makes 70K and it's just like, oh, you know, it's 300K. I'll just go down a rookie. It's not curtains. But I actually reckon he's going to, be a really good rookie pod and i think he's gonna be someone that people look back on and go oh man i wish i started him because he might be a really nice buy flip later on in the season for a forward that we've got a better a bit of a read on the role's good the job security is good and the price is really good he's massimo's price and like when he started and i think that's mm. that's a fine price to pay for someone with good job security so i think you can take it or leave it um Janif's leaving it, and that's that's fine. But I think I'm going to take it because I just like the upside. And so Janif's leaving it, it. You're taking it. I started yep. this conversation on the fence, and I'm still stuck there. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's <laughs> that advice. How's that yeah, advice? Yeah, that advice? Yeah, going, yeah, yeah. yeah, Janice going nut, and I'm saying well, I'm stuck on the fence. That is literally well, everywhere you can get. We're all over the shop with this. Yeah, let, let, let's put it this way then. If you don't need gonna to get, if you, if you don't, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, if you don't need to get Combin to get your desired Prima upgrade this week, and so it's genuinely a Sexton to Combin or Carol to Combin, where you make no money, do you still do it's it? It's different for my case because I'm double down in, and I'm going to have 200k regardless. So very team yes, dependent. Like just, this, just that. Would you boost? Would you boost for Combin? That's basically the no question. way. No, I wouldn't no boost. Way. That's, I wouldn't boost that's, for. That's what a lot of no. people are doing though. So, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Don't boost for Combin. Double down or not at all because one up, one down. Combin no. isn't. Yeah. Okay. No, you got it. You got you. There's only one scenario. I think you got to go double down because it, you're bringing him. You're going to bring in Graham before Common this week, right? Yeah. So you got to bring both of them into double down. But I'm I'm so against the idea of going like common, then Graham, and then something else. I don't like boosting for common. It, oh, what do you reckon, Dr? Boosting for I'm, common? I'm like, pretty I, much I, with you, mate. I, I reckon that uh, it wouldn't be worth a boost. You, but, yeah, you only pick common if you're going to go double down, and I think that's what I'm going to do, and I think it's fine. But but if you're one of those rare teams that went early on Closey and Graham last week, then, yeah, welcome Charlie boy of one trade. Fair enough. But yeah, oh, they would be 0.5% that, that did that. I think that indirectly answers this question, though, is that Charlie Combin is not a must-have. If you're not going to boost for no, him, it's not a must-have. No, absolutely not. No, no, no it's not a must-have. Must yes. But if you look at no, the double no. down, perfect, yeah. I say. But I wouldn't move yeah. mountains to get him. If that, yeah, no, that the must-haves are the two blokes you see down the bottom, clearly, that's it, and that's yeah. Graham and Closey. If you don't have them, they're the must-haves, and you can see on the chart there with with a with a double exclamation mark. If you don't mind, so uh, if that isn't some advice <laughs> for you, that oh, uh, yeah. I don't know what it is. That's that's some serious advice. Must trade with the must with the double exclamation mark. Must trade, jeez. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, boys. That was a pretty good discussion, oh. I think, with the rookies. Now, Janet, before we talk about possibly a couple of fallen primos. Uh, Jason Horn Francis, did you yeah, actually go there yourself, mate? I didn't go there myself. No, no, no. I just got some um, data to just say that those are traded him in. It's going to be very, very fine. Uh, he was actually battling some illness um, last week, with, according to Kenny. Was so he? wasn't okay. even a chance to get up for the game. But he needs to play fifty-three wow. percent forward against Collingwood to get him over thirty-five percent for DPP. I don't think it's going to happen. He dropped by 1% on 
even when he was ill. So I find it really hard to think that he's going to get 53%. It'll be really, really handy for those that are trading him in and for us because our forward lines at the moment, we're sort of just rolling with the rookies until until they... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm waiting till round till round twenty when I can finally trade Zorko in and not be too paranoid about it. <laughs> yeah, I love <laughs> so... it. I'm, I'm looking at that too, uh, all, all over that one. Down the track. Yeah, well, that's interesting, Janice. Yeah. yeah. So not looking yeah. great. Oh, it, if he gets there, it's going to be a miracle. How about this one, though? Riley Sanders. So will he get bevoed? He's got 38 percent time forward, and it rose a couple of percent before he got subbed out. No liver. I don't have the exact percentage which he needs to go, but I would, I would say it's about 27, 28% time forward this week to stay above 35. I don't 35. think he will, Janeth, but I still think I'm going to run an emergency on him. And then he whatever he scores will decide whether I trade out McKercher or not because I want to loop. I still don't trust it. I'd, I'd like, because they play Thursday, I'd like to have the emergency on. I'm not trading in any St. Kilda or Dogs players, nor out, so it's not going to bother. I'd like to see what he scores first because, yeah, I don't trust what, Bevo. Do you, do you think None he gets that DPP, though? Oh, it doesn't matter. He's he's out. Like do you know what? I've next... got this feeling that Bevo's gonna just spoke to him during the week and going, well, do you know what, mate? You want to throw the toys out of the coat? Reckon you're the main man? Well, Libba's out. Show us you're the main man. Would he be that sensible, Libba? I, I, uh, sorry, Bevo, I don't I don't know. But I know there could be a bit of feel of that. Like, all right, young man. Who knows what really he's going to do? I'm with yeah. Kane. And that, that's the trouble, isn't it? Like, none of us could even begin to guess what Bevo's going to do. So that's the risk with any Dogs player, I think, this year. Um, but, yeah, interesting. I, I think... I'm not even going to try to answer that because it's Bebo's his coach. We can't. Anyone it's, else is his coach, maybe. It's unpredictable. We, we don't yeah. know. Yeah. We don't know what he's going to do. That's what makes it so hard. That's We can't pick any Dogs players this year because we don't know what he what he's going to do. I mean, English and Bont, but I'm, like that's it because okay. there's no trust in Bevo. I guess yeah. the, the, other, yeah. the other piece of this puzzle is Sam Darcy, 36% in the ruck. So he's just got to play 35% ruck time, and he's got that ruck forward DPP, which come in really handy, especially oh, during the buys, I'd say. I'm thinking he gets it, those, those guys. I'd love it. You um, reckon they double team Rowan? Yeah, yeah. They like have that. to because English got double teamed last week, and I thought yeah. the oldest ruckman in the game gave him an absolute Jeez, rinse. Like, it was, yeah, a bath. Like, it was just... Oh, it was just a basket case performance from English. She was beaten just all over the ground. It was quite oh, embarrassing. Fifty eight. Oh, yeah. That's another story. Gonna be good to good to get English in after that absolutely rancid score on the weekend. I mean, he's gonna drop to five sixty. It's gonna be beautiful. That's a, that's but he was beaten. Point point. Well let's let's he was actually beaten comprehensively, yeah. I thought. Let's go off some name spills and um very quickly on English and uh Goldie, I was thinking to myself, Goldie, you're in my side for years and years in, in super coaching. You were such a great player, gave me some massive averages, and even in your old age now, you still give me a bit of a hand here and uh <laughs> dominating Timmy the English. Double rock working out for me. Dom. So yeah, thank you, yeah. Goldie. You're still delivering, mate, for us. Uh talk about some fallen premium spills, Janet did allude to this before and we will go over this pretty quickly because we haven't got any visuals but I just did want to put a few names out there because I did mention that I've got a little bit of a, a three-week plan I think in the next three weeks in particular there are going to be some really nice fallen premiums now some people like Spills is possibly looking to do this week is going right up to the creme of the creme the elite in top form, and I'm going to put a name out there, Zach Merritt. I think if there's one player that I could have in my side that I don't currently, and money wasn't a thing, it'd be Zach Merritt. I'd love to have yeah. Zach Merritt in my side. Now, I don't recommend some people look to do that. Are. Other people are looking to go your you two crowds, even though you may not think you'll average as much as is Eric. Well, we think that there's top eight, 10 potential there, and we're saving what almost close to 90 80 odd K there, I think, with the way Zeret's priced at the moment. Now, for me, there are three particular players in the next three weeks that I think would be really nice value. And I'm actually 
planning. And again, Janeth spills. This is why I'm so desperate to sort of double downgrade this week. I want to be a little screw with all the acorns in that hole in the tree because when these fallen premiums come down to their most friendly price, I want to be there to be able to pounce, right? Yeah. So the three blokes I'm talking about, I reckon next week I'm going to be looking really closely at Tom Stewart after that lower score be out of his system. Hey, we haven't seen an absolute ceiling game, mm. which I think may even be a little bit of a positive because we know that he's got it in him. And so he's such a reliable player. And I've always got the safest yeah. houses on him with the stock market. So I think it's going to be really good value next week, Tommy Stewart. The week after, all over him, Mr. Tim, Timmy English, come on down because he should be, I think, at around possibly 560 to 580K. And that would be absolutely yeah, that's wonderful the mark. if that's if that's the case. I'd be jumping all over him. And then the man the week after is the cement bag himself, Christian Petrucca. I think he's going to be at a yeah. really friendly price, hoping around the 580 mark for him. So I've got three massive targets in the next yeah. three weeks, and it's Stuart, English, and Petrucca. As I said, I've got the old school pen and paper out and worked out, well, what do I project player A is going to be? I'm looking to trade out, which rookies are going to be on the horizon. You, you can't predict some of these things, but I think that I can do it with some careful planning. A couple of things may need to go right, but I'm, and this I'm sort of answering the question I posed at the start, I'm preferring at the moment to target these fallen premiums rather than pay up for your Zerits, for your Rails, for your Luke Ryans at the moment. They're playing out of their skins, but surely every player goes through a little bit of a down patch. They will be available at a better price. How long do you want to wait? I'm not too sure. But for me, my focus is going to be on these fallen type premiums. Now, Janeth, you're an LDU owner. I don't know how you're feeling about that at the moment, mate, but he's someone that I've certainly got on my watch list. Now, he's not playing great footy at the moment, but if things turn around for him, He's someone, you've got someone, and way too risky for me, a Darcy Parish. Up next week, just in time for Anzac Day, he should be priced around 500 k If he puts out a decent score this week, maybe you think, well, short term, if he gets on fire, just finds fire for a month, he could see himself at 600 k Maybe we're looking at making 100 k for Combin, so that could be a little move there within itself. There, there seem to be a few players that will be available at, at such a friendly price at the, the sarongs of the world yep. are coming down. So a, I, I suppose a couple of questions here. Um, I might start with Janeth Spills because I know he's got out in a couple of these plays and go to you, mate. First question is mate, yep. are you prioritizing at the moment, getting the Uber elites and paying up just for the best of the absolute best, or are you, on a similar path to me and trying to target those blokes who we know are going to be great, reliable picks with super history that have had their down game and will be available at a friendlier price, but maybe aren't performing as well as some of the best of the best at the moment. Do you have a, a preference here, mate, on, on who you're the player you're trying to target? I think it's a bit of both because really I'm going to bit of a different strategy to you guys. And that's solely okay. based off of the players that you guys have that I don't. So I don't own Sarong or Tom Green. And so what's going to happen is because English and Tom Green both had their stinkers in the same week, I'm actually planning to bring Rowan Marshall in this week. Rowan Marshall has West Coast. Yeah, I, like twice. <laughs> um, I like that. And eight of their last nine games are at Marvel. That is a ridiculous run. And he's got Brisbane twice. We've seen Maxi Gorn. Um, and a couple of other rucks this year sort of toil up big O around the ground. I I genuinely enjoyed owning Rowan Marshall last year. So I think Rowan Marshall is who I'm going to target this week. Tom Stewart, like you said, mate, next week. Or Caleb Sarong. Just depends how, how big he goes against West Coast. If if he can get a, as a non-owner, if he can get 100 this week, it sort of times up perfectly with this entire plan over the next sort of four to five weeks. Tom Green in round eight. That's one play that you guys have, and that's why I'm sort of, I want to bring someone in this week, which is Grundy to Marshall. So make that upgrade early. Grundy's got around the earliest buy. I can get some good games out of Marshall. He's even a VC candidate this week against the Bulldogs. It's a, it's a move that I wouldn't have made if Tom Green was, if English was the only fallen premium in round eight, I'd be going English 100%. But now it's yeah. coming down to, do I go Marshall this week 
to get Tom Green in round eight because he, you can't bring in English and Green in the same week. Oh, so that's the basis behind your decision because I was going to ask you, are you – Yeah. Like, I was a little bit surprised that you'd be going Rowan at the price this week when you could be waiting and literally jumping on Timmy English, who we're, we're assuming is going to be at, at a lower price than what Marshall is at the moment. But you're saying that's team dependent – for you because you don't really itself, can get yes. your green and I'm your English and you're prioritizing yeah. green over English and going well, early on Rowan. The thing is I could do what you're doing this week, Dia, and just go the simple downgrade. Rowan's got a 78 break even. Spills are saying this week, last week or this week's going to be the lowest price is going to be, which I think is correct. He's playing out of his skin, really. I'll pay up big for him. Thing, one big thing to. that I saw this week's boys is that he, he had 93% time on ground. And so for 16 Jeez, clearances. That was the big man, yeah. Last week, the previous week, he had, I think he was low 70s. He was genuinely tired. And that's what Ross alluded to. But you wouldn't, yep. if you're tired, you're not playing 93% of time on ground as a Rackman. Good point. And so I think those tired concerns are out. But yes, that's that's basically the basis, boys, is um, Stuart or Sarong next week, Green the following week, Petrarca the week after. I think we're pretty set on Petrarca round nine. And then yeah, Stuart yeah. around seven. It's just what happens uh, in yeah. that round eight because yeah. there's no world in which you can afford English and Green if you're going to bring in Sarong or Stuart the previous week. It's just you're going to have to like tear apart your team to make that happen. Yeah, it would only be like if you were running maybe a Maddie Crouch or some player like that, yeah, and you don't overly it. see as a as an absolute keeper. Yeah. Um, Spilsy, how about yourself, mate? Have you um, we, we've listed a few targets that we're looking at, mate? Is there any, anyone possibly that we've missed that you've got on your radar, buddy? No, I do agree with Janeth in the Rowan pick. And if I could, I'd probably peg Rowan at R2 over English. And mm, I wouldn't yeah, make possible. the prediction. But I also wouldn't be surprised if English scored another sub-100 score this week. Because I think, I think he is getting a bit hurt by the Darcy r- ruck time. Not, not to an extent, but it's cost him 10 points a game and sides are going to work on him. And then, yeah, but you alluded to there, Janet, that, that time on ground for Rowan, that's just crazy stuff in the Marvel run. Like, I'd pay up for Rowan. I will not miss an English. Like, just say, I just want to watch him and see how he goes at the same time. But my strategy is a little bit different. I'm looking to pay up for Merritt next week, and that's that's pretty radical. But I'm, I've planned for it, boys. I planned... I've basically two two or three weeks in advance. I've planned for it to where it's not going to hurt my side. So I've actually got 70K in the bank now before I make any trades. And I'm going double down. So I'm going to have around 250K most likely in the bank for next week. So going someone down and then someone up to merit, I'm probably still going to have 100K in the bank. So yeah, DR, great point about, would you say, keeping your, keeping your buddy acorns or something like that. The acorns oh. in the hole in the tree, mate. Yep. Yeah, exactly just, right. I'm like storing them. Yep. I, I'm getting – what I'm doing there is I'm getting Zach Merritt, who I think is going to be an amazing pod, and I think he's the one player in the comp who's not coming down because we thought he would by now. He's actually gone up in price, boys, and then his run only gets him. easier <laughs> and easier. I've, I'm a Bombers man. I know all about yeah. it. He dominates Anzac Day. He dominates Green Tight the G. North and West Coast. He can pencil that in. I think he's going to be the easiest VC every single week. I've got an average of 155 this year for captaincy scores. And I think it's only going to go up if I keep that on merit. So he's the guy that I'm willing to really pay up for now. And it's not going to hurt me because I'm still going to have money in the bank. And then, yeah, we'll, we'll keep targeting that that value. Really good point. Look at, look at Stuart the following week. Have a look at Petrarca, and then yeah, that's when the real peak of upgrade season starts. So I think I'll be all sorted. But boys, very team team dependent for myself. I don't I don't think Merritt's necessarily a great trade target. But if you plan for it, like I have, and I'm a Don's man, and I, I go to basically every single home game, and I want to be able to go there. The super coach is all all good at, at the end of the day. We love it, but how it, it is it is a bit of fun at the same time, and. I want to go to Bombers games, owning him and, and yeah, watching him watching him carve it up and maybe even be a VC and, yeah, just make it a little bit more tasty, yeah. boys. So that's why they're my trade plans. So, yeah, yeah, Merritt, Stewart, Petrarca, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. Very similar. 
Scary Beautiful. non-owned schools. I'll tell you what, to back you up, 13 out of 14 games between round nine and 23 is at the MCG or the Marvel Stadium or Marvel Stadium. Is he's actually better at the at the G, I reckon, Janeth. I mean oh, man. Port Adelaide, Richmond, Collingwood. I oh, mean one forty plus at last scary, year. Scary, scary, scary. He's Damn, really good at in oh, Melbourne. Yeah. That's that's So I wanna be that guy that jumps on. He's I think he's less than ten percent owned because no one yeah. can get to him. He's impossible. I want I think he is the Liberatore of twenty twenty four. Like Liber was so good last year. Like a huge pod, but how could you get to him? Because every single week was just off the charts. 120 average before that concussion game. Spills, so you know I want to be, I don't want to be the guy that misses out on merit. I really, I just love him. He's just such this, is, this makes starting LDU hurt even more because you have like the mm, Dawson, the people hot. that started Dawson, LDU, like myself with Dawson, um, LDU, it's like Sarong and Merritt were right there. They were all in that same price bracket. Bracket. We were all contemplating. Would he pick Merritt because he, we thought he was going to get tagged round he one? Tagged. He went one thirty. Yeah, I wouldn't even want to do the maths on that, Janet. That'll probably just be depressing, mate. If you work but, that out, but because, that's the thing, mate. Wow. Like I'm ranked, I'm ranked two K, and I've got LDU, and I could have had Sarong. Yeah. Or, or like anyone imagine, really, just imagine, like anyone. Mate. And yeah. so it's sort of he's like the weakest link at the moment, which is really like it's a good thing. But also like a really depressing thing because like you're saying, you could have started Merritt and you wouldn't be in this situation. Yeah, just imagine that, mate. But hey, look, you, you've got he most could be of M1, right, boys. Mate, so he looks amazing. He, could. he really could. Yeah. yeah. All right, boys. We are Steel basically one, but... right on the one hour mark. So we want to get this to about an hour and a half. Need to try to keep this on track time wise. I reckon it's time to jump into the mailbag, uh, answer some of these questions, and then uh, we'll quickly finish off with some captains and our, when I say final trades, the trades that we're looking at at this stage, a lot can change as we know, but we'll get the mailbag up. And uh, as always, thank you very much for all of your questions, guys. We will try to get through these a little bit quicker this week because we want to keep it to around the hour and a half mark. Uh, all very busy at the moment, and uh, but we will obviously do our best to give as much detail as possible. First one is from an absolute legend of the community. We did reference uh, Kata during the potty. How are you, legend? Good to see you, mate. G'day, gents. Looking at using a second boost, but in doing so, offloading a few, few rookies a week or two early. Thoughts on these trades? So out, Sanders, mm. Cadman, and Carroll in. Biggie, Graham, and Took. So we've got three rookies here. I think it's fair to say Carroll's almost maxed out. Cadman will... Well, at least by next week. Sanders, I don't mind holding at the moment. He's gone 80 this week, Sanders, I reckon. Well, yeah. we're getting Graham Hughes a must-have. Two coups, a fantastic premium at the moment with a really nice run. And then going early on Biggie, we've talked a fair bit on Biggie there. Uh, team after trades with 29 trades and three boosts left. So we can see pretty decent back line there. Laird's yes, a bit hold. of a pod. Miller Martin. Got Grundy in the side there. All right, already. Uh, what are fun. you? Uh, what are you thinking, boys? Uh, Spills, would you give this the thumbs up to Cater, mate? Absolutely, but I probably, I probably sub out the the Biggie and Sanders trade. I think you probably fall short, but if there's someone else that can go, I just don't feel comfortable trading Sanders. I just think he's not yeah. quite. We need one more week. This is the week, as you as you said, Dr. Before, show us what you got, Riley Sanders. No liver. I think this is the worst week to trade him. Um, I I think yeah. he could well and truly do a Blake Howes of last week and and bang that break even down a little bit. If there's anyone else that can go, and like look, he's got Sexton on the bench. I think you you got to fix that up a little bit. There's some good if you can go, uh, maybe trade out Sexton to Biggie instead. Still using a boost, but probably misses out on two. It's a really tricky one for my liking, but mm. I don't like the I, idea of trading out Sanders personally. Janice, not I'd yet. I'd be looking at Sexton or Carroll to Graham and just keep it there. Honestly, um, you're gonna miss Took, but it's tough because it's not worth you could it. Do, is you it? could do Cadman. Oh. It's it's that I'd third go part Cadman, there, like, like Spills is saying is because we don't have that second 
really good rookie on the bubble. Because let's say that that new one was um, Closey. Closey, Graham and Took, the three Gold Coast boys, for those set of trades, yeah, 100% every day of the week. It's just that going early on new one, you may lose your downgrade target for next week. Just a bit, mm, just, yeah, just not sold on it. So I'd probably do Carol to Graham in your case and leave it there, mate. Um, but it, it is a, it is a really tough one, especially because we want to get that we won't get that bench cash gen cash gen going, but Neon's not making any cash this week. That's that's the tough part. I wouldn't boost. I don't think for it personally. It's not so worth we're going, it. So uh, going no for a boost. And Janeth, you're saying that um, you'd possibly just be looking to get that must have trade done and and getting Graham and uh, Carol, maybe leaders Sexton, that. And, yep, Clark. Any of them can go really. Get rid of a dead rookie first. Well, Sanders, let, let's put it to time. you boys. Put it to you boys this way, because we may be able to knock off a couple of questions this way. If you had to trade yep. McKercher, Carroll, Clark this week, in which order do you rank them? It's McKercher for me. Clark, McKercher. Carroll. You're going McKercher at first, Spills? Yep. Clark. Do you know what? And Carroll. I've, I've had different thoughts about Clark, right? Because I think of it one way like this. He's what, like 180k, got a 70 something yeah. break even, comes on as a sub, he's gonna lose 20 lose k, money. probably another something k. But then, like, you, you've made nothing from him. You made nothing from him. Is it almost worth? I'm asking seriously ask myself this question this week. Is it actually worth just letting him sit there, lose a bit of coin, but hopefully just pray for a spike game where it can actually make a hundred K? I'm the risk with that, DR, is if you're like me, who's got Zach Reed and Toby Pink in defense or some other sides that have a Caulfield, do you really, and then Sexton too, do you really want three or four dead rookies? I mean, you got to fix that cash gen, and it's a that's massive a point, risk. I'd, yeah, that's a good point, it, It's really, it's it's very risky, I reckon. I, I want to get rid of Clark. Oh, there's better rookies. Clark down to, down to Graham. Never look back, whatever. So I'm really interested to see teams this week. I reckon Clark's gone for Dangerfield. He's gone. He, he's, he's not, not playing. Team. There's no. Yeah. There's no way. I, I hope so. I hope so. And that that way, I don't feel obliged to sort of trade him. What about um, Kirch? If Kirch isn't named, do you hold him because he's not going to lose money this week? Well, depends. You got a loophole, Sanders. Like, if you want to have Sanders on the mm. bench, see what he does. If he doesn't get subbed out again, if he scores 70 or 80 plus, maybe you can hold McKercher if he's ruled out, use him as a loop, and then trade him the following week. But if he's named, got to go. I mean, you're going to yeah. lose so much oh. money. Uh, that That's the other part of this, Bills, is, okay, He's you, you're just committing to no cash, Jenny. He's going to lose a bunch of money over the next two weeks. But then yep. he's going to flatten out at 256, and... He's a good rookie, right? He's he could go he's back up. But... Three peak. He's going to go back up. How long are you willing he... to wait, though? Like, how long he's are you willing to wait? He's got his buy. Oh. He's got the earliest right. buy. So you're going to hold him for six more weeks, I reckon. You either trade him this week if he's named, or you hold him for six weeks. Yeah. Do you know what the other issue for me is? I don't know if you watch the. I don't know if you watch this game, Janet, but there was a bit of a, a change in role the week before mm. as well, where his CBAs went right up. And he actually spent a lot more time in the midfield. And at the start of this game, he was actually right in the midfield again in those CBAs. Now, personally, and we love normally when our players are running through the midfield, but but not McKercher. I'd much rather him yeah. playing in defence. And so that role change potentially got does exposed to bit there, And I think that takes down his ceiling a little bit mm -hmm. and actually lowers his floor. So. Interesting. I'm, he's I'm, done well. I, th I just think he accepts a fate and you just jump ship. Like that's almost what I'm. That's almost my attitude. Because there's the no, moment. there's only, a, there's only a couple of other 300k plus rookies in Mass and Williams, and they've both come off 90 plus essentially. Like they're gonna make money. You can't trade them. So like McKerch is the obvious one, and then like a Cadman yeah. or Barry next week. But I, true. I just think he's got to go. I think you just got to get those rookies off field. He might make another. It's, like it's fifty or sixty k, like in the long like, run, but yeah, like we we want to we want to save those acorns in the tree spills. You know what I mean? And the thing is, McKercher's at a price now 
where we can actually, and although he hasn't made a heap of coin, just given the fact he had a higher starting price, still we are banking a fair bit of coin here. And it gets to the point where it's like, well, I, I need a particular amount of coin. Do I want to trade out McCurch now with his break even of 101 or do I have to trade out a five to make the move? Because I want to get these big three in in the next three weeks. I need money to do that. And so I need to be doing things short term. I'm, I'm not viewing McCurch as keeping him long term and waiting for that cash. And I want the cash now. I need cash now. And I'd yep. much rather go on a rookie that's got a break even of 100 plus rather than going mm, someone yep. else. But mm -hmm. that's just me. If you've got faith in him to come back, and he's a oh, talented bloke, isn't he? He's such a talented player. Um, but too many question marks for me. Anyway. Fair thanks. enough. Yeah. It's stock market's plummeted. He's. He's cool. Yeah, he's the old, cool. yeah, not great in the stock, mate. Down. But um, good on you, Cutter. Hopefully that. Oh, sorry, where are we here? Uh, hopefully that helped out a little bit there, mate. Uh, all right. Hopefully Next we answered a few on. questions there too. Yeah, I already okay. have two, mate. Yep, yep. Here we go. The Christmas Carol, John O'Carroll. How are you, legend? G'day, lads. I'm looking at Common and Graham in for my cousin and McCurcher, cousin being Jack Carroll, Cuts. obviously. Also, I'd be interested in your thoughts on my possible captain still in Tahini. Keep up the US and word, lads. Love the podcast. So Common and Graham talked about that a lot. So all good with that. I think we'd all agree there, boys. And yeah. uh, Janet, I might go to you because you are the uh, man with the captain's corner. What do you think about still into Tahini, mate? Would you give Jono the two thumbs up for that one? Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love uh, it. Steel's, Steel's really good. Heaney is the one. It's like, oh, there's no way Gold Coast don't. Oh, he's got the runs on the board now, Janeth. I'm pretty yeah. confident with him. We thought You're this confident. last year. I'll give you. I'll give you the exact example because I had Lock and Neil last year, and he was untouchable for a couple of weeks in a row. And then I put the captaincy on him. Wouldn't you know? Tuke Miller goes and stands by him, and he's annoying him at every stoppage. <laughs> there's. It's really. Po it Ouch. is quite possible that that is what happens to Heaney this week. Yeah, but you're and missing so. you're missing one thing, Janeth, and yes, it's <laughs> this big boy here. Never lose faith. And I'd Mate, dream. you carry that thing around with you everywhere, don't you? Like, I don't mind. I, I, I back it in. It's just, on, it's just I've always got on hand in any podcast because you never know when you got to whip it out. And I think now's a better time. You it out. Mate, you need to like you need to like drill a hole through the top and put like a big gold chain through there, mate, and have that as like your bling, like your Heen's dog bling. That would look sick, bling. Man. That'd be a neck workout yeah. if I've ever seen one. Absolutely. With that, you know, the, your big purple jacket that you got, I love that as well. So get the oh, purple geez. ski jacket on, mate. Get the egg going. That would be elite, mate. Absolutely <laughs> elite, I reckon. Um, but yeah, John Oat, we're all, uh, yeah, all I like uh, thumbs up like for those well, ones, buddy. Heaney, Heaney is good. Go for it. He's be okay. All right, Andrew Rexek, good on you, legend. How are you, mate? G'day, legends. Doing a double downgrade to Garcia and Nguyen. Oh, wow, this is interesting. So going early on to here for cash. Oh, as no. I brought in Graham and... Well, I'll tell you what. He's done the opposite Andrew's, of what we want to do. He's on a roll here because he's gone <laughs> Graham and Closty last week. Now, is it worth boosting to get a forward premium Flanders this week or save the boost and just upgrade next week? Can field 20 run regardless oh, of the boost Cheers. I tell you what, spot. now Andy, you are living very dangerously here, mate. Now it worked out well last week. Kudos to you, mate, because it gives you so many options for this week. So you've gone double down, double down. So you must be, I tell you what, talking about banking some coin here, Andrew would be banking a lot of coin. Look, I don't love it from the start, mate, going early on too, unless you've got some info, you're you're really keen on it. Um Janeth, start with skills for last one. I'll ask you, buddy. What do you reckon? All it takes is one injury to Garcia and Nguyen, and they're, they're cooked for cash gen. They're cooked for your on-field points, and you basically, if they're not injured, you've lost two of your downgrade targets the next week. You're going to, this is a cycle which happens, especially during the buys, where to get players on field, you go that you go one week early. Oh, and then next week, I'm going to have to go one week early again. Yeah, You've got to have someone to cycle. downgrade too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not All right, fan. well... The next part to the question here, uh, Spilsy, is it worth boosting? So let's just say that Andrew's really keen and he's going to lock these trades in anyway. So let's just assume that spills. Do you think it would then be worth boosting to then get a premium in with those two? So he's obviously gone double down last week, double downing now. Do you think it's important for Andrew to bring in a premium given the fact that he's doubled down for the last couple of weeks where you might have other teams that are getting maybe one down, one up? For the last couple, mate, what would you say if Andrew was 
locking those in and looking to boost for a premium, mate. Doesn't well, he must have a bit of money in the bank if he's just doubled down. So why wouldn't you just go one up, one down? Bring in a rookie, like go maybe yeah, bring in a biggie and then then go Flanders. I don't necessarily see how you have to boost for him. Hmm. So you're assuming that because he went the double down last week, that he must have. He's got. A bit he's sure he's got 150k. And he's like he has to. Yeah. Like, if you double All down, right. I will. So how about if Andrew could do this? We're saying that possibly the best advice could be to go down to New on and up to Flanders. Would you guys be happy with that if Andrew? Yeah, had forget the, Garcia. You, that? you don't go. Yeah, I wouldn't go early on Garcia. No way. Yeah. If it's a Janet, one up one down, I'd be I'd be happy with yeah. that. Yeah. Realistically, so if you're doing Garcia and Yuan, you should be able to get an Uber Uber. From now on, I think one of the one of the things which I'm using in my team right now is I'm only going to use a boost if it gets me an absolute top line in the midfield. It's not in yep. defense, it's not in the forward line. These merit sarong, green, Petrarca types. Even if they are discount, they're still so expensive. That's where those boosts are going to be used, I reckon. And I feel like you can get to Flanders with a one up, one down. He's not that expensive. He's five sixty six. Yeah, he's not even six hundred. You don't need a boost. Like the yeah. only the only word I see where Andrew wouldn't have that is let's just say he's gone. He's got your Caulfield and your your Reed, and he's mm. gone. Do you know what? Bugger it. I'm just going yeah. to fix these couple yeah, of blokes. That would be the only word I see where he probably wouldn't have the cash. But we're saying, Andy, very, very risky in our opinion, going early on the two, possibly look to go early on the one and then make that upgrade. So maybe one down, one up this week, if you can, legend. But all the best of luck, buddy. And uh, thanks again for all your support on the potty bug. Uh, next is Supercoach Lock. How are you, legend? Make sure you check out Supercoach Lock as well. Love his work. Hey, guys. Love your work as always. Cheers, buddy. Any update on how close Sam Darcy is to gaining Ruck DPP or Bevo screw us again? Well, if only we had the answer to that one. If he does gain Ruck status for non-Jackson owners, would be a handy keeper as an F7 R3 swing. For the last question, absolutely, mate. I'd probably look to keep him for the year just to have that extra security there. Janice, did you actually mention this before, mate, about... Yeah, Sam we went, we went over this. He's what, at 36%. What do you have the numbers, mate? He's at 36%. He basically needs to play 35% ruck time uh, this week, and he's got it. Okay, yep. beautiful. So, uh, yeah, there's the answer that one, lock. Uh, should be pretty close, buddy. And Thanks, I, that legend. Yeah, if, 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 he's, if he gains ruck status, I would probably take 80s from him at... F6 until he's my final upgrade. Well, and then who, make who that R3, screaming... R3, F7. Yeah. Who else is screaming for that spot at, at F6 at the moment, Janet? Yeah. There's no, <laughs> no one, one is wants there, it. There's no mate. forwards. Yeah. Exactly right, mate. Might as well run with that. I agree wholeheartedly with that. And that Good and on you that's, there, that's why Riley Sanders, for instance, it's so important that he does get forward DPP because he just provides that little sort of option that you can keep him to the end because there's no forwards popping the head up right now. He's ever. Sanders is averaging 70. If he gets a continual run of games as a super coach forward playing inside mid, he could be better That's than what he needs, half the blokes we've yeah. currently got. Yeah, absolutely, mate. All right. Uh, thanks, mate. Here he is, the ladies' man, Causa Blackledge. Is it okay for McKercher and Clark to Convent and Graham? But also, I'm so glad I traded McKay out last week, but was worried in that first quarter. I was worried for, I think I sent you a message here. Uh, Causa during the uh, that first quarter, mate. Just to, uh, just to rub it in, bit of banter there, ladies, man. Uh, boys, we're saying it's okay. McCurcha and Clark. I'm trying to, to I'm pretty much what I'm doing. I yep, think. you're all good with it. Spills, Janet. Give ladies, man, the thumbs up for that one. Yep. 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 Good on you, Causa. And uh, you probably know more about us and Combin being a, a North man yourself, mate. So, uh, yep, all Back good for that in. one, Causa. On your legend. The legends and the longest serving members of my channel continue. Here is H. G'day, legends. Uh, get eight legend even. Hey lads, hope you're doing well. Welcome back, Janeth, McKercher, Clark, and Sexton. Two of them need to go this week. Thinking of bringing Graham as one trade, which is absolutely. Second trade is a little tough. Do I bring in Combin or do I go early on Garcia and Biggie? Nah, bite. <laughs> yep. So Spills, early on Combin. Uh, sorry, early on Biggie or you going Combin? I'm going Combin, mate. 
because I want I'm someone good. to go down to next week. I don't, I, other than Biggie, I don't like anyone else for next week. So I'm playing ahead for him. So I can see why you would because he's a lot All cheaper. Right. And I know Janeth will play devil's advocate because we did have the conversation oh, about it, but so that nice. is very team orientated for me. So I think All it's, right, I think common's fine. Sex, what, Sexton what and Clark think? to common isn't even a downgrade. It's an upgrade. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's losing. actually a good point. That's actually a good point. You need 45k to get up to Combin. Yep. So, I mean, in that, like, you're not making any money in this trade. You're making 100k, Kirch, Dan Graham, and then the money used in that to go up. Is it worth the double? Probably not then. Probably not. And you only get 120k out of it? Yeah. I probably would bring Common in in that it's scenario. Money. You've got to go down. You get the cash. You get the immediate cash from Combin. I don't know. Uh, I'd. With Probably H, not. I know I've seen I've seen H's team. I think that if you've got more than three dead rookies, including your Clarks, Carols, Reed, maybe four, let's say four, because many have Livingston, you probably do want need to go Combin just to make sure you've got some cash flow generating in your team. Because yep. it's looking pretty dire straits at the moment with the sub rules and all that yeah. all that stuff. You know, I think if Common goes, let's just say 75, then an 80, I think that's pretty much 100K, close to 100K there. So, oh, look, I personally, I'm going to say Common for me simply because I'm so worried about Biggie's job security when he got Dawson breathing down his neck, given the fact that he only came in with a Dawson injury. That concerns me. That concerns me. So I'm going to personally say Combin. Um, and you blokes, sw Spills, you switch back to... Uh, to Biggie, yeah, I I must have missed miss um missed that Sexton one. If you're paying up for oh, common, right. no. Nah. For me, it's McCurch is down. Yeah. It's like eighty k difference. I think that's different, but I wouldn't go up to common. Certainly not in a boost either. So yeah, all right. Probably Sorry, Biggie. H. So we can't really agree on that one there, mate. I'm going a little bit away from the crowd. So maybe listen to the other two blokes, mate. Uh. Next question is from Camo. G'day, Camo. How are you, buddy? Love your work, team. Thanks, mate. Lead up to rounds seven, eight, nine, where we might to see some fallen primos bottom out. Is this a good week to double or triple downgrade? And which rookies should go first? So, yeah, yes. well, if you haven't got your close in your Graham, it's – well, we think it's a good week to downgrade if you can to prepare for those fallen premiums, mate. And who should yep. go first? Carol Howes or Jai Clark spills. Who's going first for you, mate? Out of Carol Howes and Clark, it's Carol for me. Yourself? Oh yeah, probably Carol. Um, Howes is so tough because his break even's low. He's gonna be a good rookie for the rest of the year, but he stuffs me up all over the shop structure wise. So I don't know. I still don't know if I want to trade him or not. It's I'm absolutely rattled about it. So. I'd probably, yeah, probably say Carl first, but. Yep. Janice? And then Howes and Clark. Man. You going to stay loyal to uh, Jack or uh, see the back of him, mate? I've got no idea because I originally I thought that Carol was the easiest, easiest sort of like for like replacement for Chera. And then we bring in Big Pitto. <laughs> That's a bit it's different, tough. isn't it, mate? Yeah, I think a bit of a we've, we've lost Saad for six weeks, Govan for, McGovern for two. Uh, Martin's a while away. Fog's a while away. There's just lost so many injuries at the Blues right now that Carol may just play because of necessity, whether that okay. be as a forward, as a mid. If that's the case, if he's named and he's not the sub, just keep him. You find out relatively early in the round. Um, whereas because with Howes, you, you you can make a decision and you can wait to make a decision until the Geelong game, um, to see okay how did Carol go and then if he if he's the sub. Um, then just moving on, moving on, move him on. Sorry, can't speak. Otherwise, um, yeah, trade out Clark and or Howes up to you. I think, Spills, you were mentioning something about Howes and why you need to trade him out before. Well, because it gets Dacos back in defence and then yeah. it stops me from having Graham and Sanders on the mid bench. Ah, okay. It's a lot of points on the bench yeah. and then getting yeah. a donut in defence. So it really, it stuffs my structure up big time where getting rid of him, like, yeah, you push Dacos back and then Graham comes on and then you can loop Sanders. It just, 
makes things I only have one non playing player, it's Max Gorn. So how's out just fixes everything, but it's the worst time because he's got a twenty break oh, even no now. Way. He's recently no his break on. even on his buy. It's so frustrating. So like, re- yeah. it's actually really difficult. I probably will jump. I wouldn't recommend it, but for my team in particular, just because I've got Dacos in the mid, it just re- it makes it just so hard. I'm going to lose a lot of points on my mid bench if I don't get rid of him. Mm. So again, team dependent. Hopefully that helps there, Camo. Thank you very much as always for your question, Legend. Next one is Mitch Atkos. How are you, buddy? Is it okay for just one trade this week? Graham in for Kirch or Carroll. I'm 6K short of getting cleaners in two trades. Uh, boys are all saying yes. Okay with one trade. You don't have to use two or three, do you? All good with that? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Can get him trading Mass or Sanders early. That doesn't feel great. Nah, I'm with you there, mate. Already own Closey. Yeah. Don't want to boost no, in him. another early rookie. Yep, I think we're all giving uh, the thumbs up there. Good one, Mitch. Yeah, yeah, one, yep. Awesome uh, thinking there, Legend. We're on the same page, all of us there, mate. Our next one is the coacher. Hey, mate, what are you guys looking to do with Dogger? Trade into English next week after this West Coast matchup. Are you guys looking to bring yeah. in Combin up this week? So I don't think we need to talk Combin anymore. Uh, what are you guys looking to do with Jackson? So I'm a Jackson owner. I want to get data this week and I'm going to base my decision off, off what I see this week. I think now oh, maybe a little bit of full data, given the fact that it's West coast and the best opposition, but I'm really keen to see that ruck split. And I'm sure that what it looks like this week, it may not look like the week after, because I really think they'll leave Shrek in, but I would like one more week starter because another thing Janet mentioned or touched on before, there's not a heap of good forwards this year. And is it worth just keeping on swim? You know, I started with yeah. him, so it's not like I'm necessarily losing cash in a way. Um, so I suppose my answer to that, mate, is I'm simply going to wait another week and get some real-time data. Skills, another Dogger week. Owner, mate. Yeah, Still I'm waiting corner, another yeah. week. I can see why people would hold him because he's definitely a top six forward. But I think next week you could possibly... You could get him up to Rowan. I like that. I really like that because Rowan's going up. Jackson's going down. So if you can go, you go Clark, be a DPP, big in, and then maybe do that. I I, I really don't mind it. But yeah, I don't really know if Jackson's going to be a viable pick and he's made some money. You may as well cash him out, right? To a, someone you know is a top two Ruckman. So I like that idea as well. But 100% hold he's west this week so if he's not rucking he'll be down forward kicking snags you'd think so it's a definite hold and assess the situation next week for my liking janeth you're not a, a dogger owner but what would your thoughts be mate are you any different on that would you be looking to just cut your losses this week and, and not even risk it i think the trade time to trade him out was two weeks ago if you were just purely looking at cash because yep. he that's was maxed he was out. Thinking. We knew he was maxed yep. out. Break even yep. was... It was the last week. You guys would know better as Jack's noticed. It was either the last week or the week before. He was like 620. Like Yeah, he was. He yeah. was, yeah. He he was, was I thought he maxed at really 600. Cool. I don't think well, he was. Six. Yeah, around the mark. Something around he got like, was... like 598, and then now he's going down. You could have like... you could have switched him straight to one of those Uber mids if you really wanted, but... You see the benefit of holding him was like last week, you guys were able to do a Grundy to anyone, whereas a non-Jackson owner could only do Grundy to a Rackman. Yep. I'd be yep. holding Good Jackson point. for this week. See how the split between Darcy and Jackson looks. Hell, it might it might be Jackson 60, Darcy 40. You never know. Like, it it really, well, it's gonna be it really does look like yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Think we've answered that one. Thank you very much, Coach. Uh, uh, he's another legend, the Rain Man and a Cout Man as well. How are you, buddy? I know Janeth is an LDU owner. You just want to rub that in. Do you, mate? Bit of a drive-by from Rain Man early. I don't think it is. It's uh, legitimate, this one. He's a good man. Has he bottomed yeah. out? Average enough touches, but deficiency is uh, disposal efficiency is down. Turnover's up. Is this a symptom of a lack of support and trolling a new midfield mix? Good matchups coming up. Can he turn it around? I'm a discount shopper. And he looks ripe for the picking. So Rain Man is not a current owner like yourself, Janeth. The question here is, do you think that he could be a viable target for those that don't currently own him? Do you see him turning it around, mate? 
it's a bit hard for me to answer this question without actually seeing him play the last couple of weeks. But, I mean, 520k, I picked him at the start of the season thinking he's going to really hit that 120 on a consistent basis. He started well. Like, in the first round, I was really happy with his 120, 121 against the Giants. Tough midfield. And then it's just been downhill since then. He, he's he got Hawthorne at Marvel, Adelaide at Blunston, St. Kilda at Marvel, the next three. I was telling um, someone at work today that LDU should score 120 this week. If he doesn't score 120 this week, he, he's scrapping. There's no point. He's, well, he's like Dawson and Clary at the moment. There's no point in even going anywhere near them when there's so many better midfield options. You've got four, you got three Suns mids that are averaging way more than him. And I'd rather have one of those three at M8 than LDU right now. But they're, he just needs to show a sign against Hawthorne and then Rain Man with um, Rob. 125 break even. He's not going to go up much in cash if it does explode. Um, this isn't the week. It's probably another week unless you're like myself and you need an upgrade this week. Uh, then LD may be the risk you want to take. It's very risky though. I wouldn't advise it. Beautiful, mate. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Rain Man, you've heard it from the man himself, the only LDU owner here. But I oh, know I was very you hold close. Hold this you may as well. That post by well well, yeah. yeah, it, it, it's a tough yeah, he, one. He but yeah, all the best of luck, man. I'm not, I'm not right. him. He's just, he is the weakest link, but it's like he's he's just going to loiter around that mark, I reckon, unless he, unless yep. he does get back to the LDU fold. He's too talented not to come back strong at some stage, I think, anyway. Free agent this year uh, as well. Or it might be a pre agent or a free agent. So you Ooh, never know. Okay. Yeah. Going for new yeah. Contract, Absolutely, mate. All right. Next one is from Abs. G'day, Abs. How are you, legend? Love the cameo from Little Fella on later Stocky TR. Thanks, mate. I'll tell you what, I, I actually recorded it twice. And I don't know, at times, there's just some sort of a bug in the system. I was that frustrated. And then I just had to look after Little Fella. So I uh, fed him with a bit of chocolate, got my middle son to look after him in the room with me as well. So, uh, yeah, hopefully his mum doesn't find out about that one. But thank you, brother. Appreciate uh -huh. that, mate. Completing my defence this week via trading Young back in. My finished defence, Ryan, tick. Dacos, tick. Sheasel, tick. Houston, tick. Young and Martin. Wow. Is it ways to f wise to fade Stu and lock this defence in? And do you like trading young back in oh very int I, I actually really like that defense at the moment i suppose the question is boys uh young versus stewart so young this week or possibly stewart the next week uh Half question Spiel, you got a, a, a gut feel on that one mate i think stewart's more proven young's definitely having a purple patch so i think i like stewart more you do have There's... Dacos DPP, so if the value is really good and they're, they're all looking really good, you can if you've got a Graham, you can you can definitely flip Dacos in your mid if you wanted to. Yeah, I it's a tough you... one. I do like Stuart just a little bit more than Young, but I, I I think it's fine bringing Young back into your team because he looks spectacular and I don't think I don't know if it's sustainable is... because he's pulled it out of nowhere, but he's. Yeah, it's not, not as many turnovers. The tackle counts up. He's just looking like a bull. So, yeah, I can't I may, go wrong with it, honestly. I may, this this may just become my new persona on the podcast of playing devil's advocate. Uh, but I love it. There's a big elephant in the room with that defense. And I know Young's going to get DPP, but you have Luke Ryan, Dan Houston, and Hayden Young on the same buy. And I would assume. Yeah, good call. That there is Ooh. at least one Freo mid or power mid in your midfield. That's just abs. I know you're a good coach, mate. So I'm, and what's I'm the bench look like? You've got, one of, you've got one of those big three, Sarong, Butters, Rosie types. Three defenders from the one by. It's almost like we've been being blessed with the Port Adelaide Fremantle by that we're just loading up on them. And you get to that by like, <laughs> where's the rest Great of my point. team? <laughs> yeah, listen to the professor, Great. I think. That's good advice. Yeah, and so for that, that reason, I'd really lock you in. That. Yep, oh, that's at, terrific. At can't can't go wrong with that. I think. Yeah, yep. I won't argue with that. Yeah, I'm happy to, yep. to accept a feed on Devil's Advocate there because that's a <laughs> that's a magnificent point, it's just a podcast. 
No, I know, but that's a great that's a great point that none of us considered. So, um, yeah. well done, mate. But it's it's genuinely a concern because I know I'm in the similar position. I've got Ryan and Houston, and I have Butters, and I want to get Sarong in. So that's four primos, uber primos mm. that's going to be missing in that week. So getting that young, getting a Rosie in, it's sort of like you if you have Jackson, you hold him through to the bye. You're like, bloody hell, I've got you want too, fourteen man. players this week. Yeah, that's yeah, true, isn't it? Like the friendly the buy could become unfriendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that helped there, Abs, and uh, good on you, buddy. Thanks for the question, mate. Uh, next one. Oh, this is so wholesome. I think that was in regards to the video there. Thank you very much, Pig. And um, Thanks, I have man. congratulated Pig on a couple of videos, but mate, great to see you are part of the Dr. Supercoach really? crew now. The like best of the best, mate. The absolute elite of the Supercoach community. So uh, loving your work, Kudos, Pig, with all your captain stuff well, as well. Uh, yeah, love hearing your voice on the potties as well, Pig. Missed out on you this week, mate. Chizo and uh, JB yeah. were back on, but uh, yeah, can't line. wait to hear from you again, mate. So good on you, Pig. Cheers, brother. Uh, next one is from the Silver Pigeon. Now, Jamie's actually going really well. He's um, He was a late entrance into the cash league. He's in most of my cash leagues uh, year upon year and uh, tends to, to go very well. So maybe I won't invite you next year, Jamie, but uh, no, congratulations, mate. Uh, I think we've already gone through this one. Also, would you hold older you? Old. He's a hard watch at the moment. Yeah, look, Janeth gave his synopsis there, mate. So, uh, yeah, take that what you will. You may have a bit of a different feeling or have a bit of a different gut feel. But, uh, yeah, that's probably the best that we can give you there, what uh, what Janice said before, mate. So, cheers, buddy. All the best, mate. Good luck, mate. <laughs> Here's Cutter again. The great man's back for two. Back uh, for second. Classic intro. Welcome back, Janeth. Boys have been doing a cracking job in your absence. Well, thank you very much on uh, both counts yeah. there, mate. Uh, just wondering, going into round six and after trades, how many premiums slash keepers will you have in your side, including players on a buy? Do you guys know off the top of your head? I might just do a quick count here. I've got 14, including Powell and Davies Uniaki. So, yeah. The, the cash gen is there on field. But I'll, yeah, on the bench I'll be looking at 13. Great. I'll be looking at 13, is that with but Powell? with 360. Yeah, 13 with Powell, but with yeah. 360K in the bank. Ah, see, that's Spilsy. the difference. Yeah. Yeah. That, that will be the difference there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was just counting myself. Yeah, 12 with Powell. But yeah, I've got some good cash gen and some pretty good rookies too. So yeah. Um, so between 12 and 13. Or it's maybe 12 to 14, depending on, on oh, cash 40, and yeah. all the best in the bed. Yep, yeah. Yep. I don't know if that's yeah. average, Kat. It'll be interesting to hear from some other coaches as well, mate. But, yeah, that's how we're running at the moment. Cheers, brother. Uh, Jamie's back again. Another one back for seconds. Hey, Legends, is it too late to jump on Flanders or should I just grab Walsh early? I am very much on the Flanders train there. Flanders. Yeah. Flanders, Flanders, Flanders. Yep. And yep. Bad, just, the good forward is so playing. much harder to come by than... A good midfielder. Exactly what I was going to say there, mate. We're blessed for options in the midfield, but it's yeah. uh, dire reading in the forward line. So absolutely uh, fine, Flanders, mate. Cheers, bud. Uh, CR7, another regular, regular, regular even yeah. uh, on the mailbag. How are you, buddy? Hey, boys, is it risky going early on Biggie? Uh, we've answered that to death, I think, mate. Cover it helps him free yeah. up cash, but I have doubts of his job security knowing Dawson will be coming back. Yeah, we've had the exact conversation for a good probably 10 to 15 minutes, mate. So, uh, yeah, good make minutes, for that yeah. what you will, and uh, hopefully that can help you uh, make a decision on that one, mate. Cheers, buddy. Oh, look at this great man here giving us some love farts. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, brother. Uh, Luca, how are you, Luca? Good to hear from you, mate. Get our legends. Would you trade Cadman for Combin for a boost? No. Use no, two no, so no, far. No, no. Um, so I think we've said no for that, mate. No for a Combin yep. boost. Also, would you bring in Merit or Steel oh. this week? On 15K rank and trying to cut that down. I like Merit's run, but unsure uh, if I should just cut my Can I answer this one, DR? Go Steel. for it, Spilsy. If it was this week, Steel every day of the week because he's still pretty cheap and he's He's M1 currently, but next week with Steele's, I think he's going to make 30K again, getting close to Merritt. I, with Merritt's run, I'd probably go Merritt. But this week in particular, uh, Jack Steele for sure. What All do you right. reckon, Jana? The fact that Jack Steele 
at 625k is considered cheap. That's oh, nuts great. to think about. He is. He is. Well, he's yeah. saving a lot of money this I, week, but next I week feel, they're pretty close the to each other. I, I get that. I get that. But just think about it. Two years ago, crook shoulder Jack Steele couldn't even lay a tackle. It's bullshit. Or like this is handball. Not so and now he's so upset about it. Like, now he's in the M1 consideration. That's mental, man. He's back. Twenty twenty two. Jack Steele is back. Way. Twenty twenty one. Way. So. Are you both agreeing that you're going to steal this week, if it's this week? Yep. yep. Yes. I like the Marvel run. That Marvel run at the end of the season. Yep. It's very similar. It's like, it's it's really difficult to pick out. If we go by buys, um, yeah, because Essendon have the third buy, Saints have the last buy. And so it's like, they don't have the same buy. Merritt probably has an easier coming fiction now but a harder fiction to end the season Fremantle, Gold Coast, Sydney, Brisbane pretty tough matchups for mids um, whereas the Saints they're just fiction to end the season West Coast, Essendon, Brisbane, Richmond, Geelong Carlton, all at Marvel West Coast and Richmond he should towel up Essendon if possibly If you don't get Merritt next week like it's like a now or never if you don't get yeah. him for this run that he's got you're never going to get him so possibly. I don't yeah. want to miss out so you're but, sort of yeah, hoping for a tag. A low break even. Yeah, As a that's owner, all we're you're like, This the only thing that's going to stop it is like how yeah. Liam Shields put the burners on after he got that 82 point quarter and end up 135. It's like, please, just anything. Right. Yeah. anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, but yeah, mate, exactly. one thing I think we can all 100% agree on: you can't go wrong either way, mate. We still lose yeah. there. You're looking at two really good options there, mate. Get them so. both in. All the oh, wouldn't that be you'll, lovely, mate? Wouldn't that week. be a great double no, up, week. mate? Oh, terrific. Uh, next one is from Logan Jennings. G'day, Logs. G'day, lads. Looking at getting in a big primo mid this week. Kirch to Biggie going early there. Cadman early on a rook. King to Merritt. Hate going early Wait on a mid week. Wait one Graham more week, man. Last week. Uh, figure most bringing Kane next week. Um, we're not loving this going early on the two, are we, boys? No. And Merritt's got a 130 break even too. Could hit it, but look. You're paying up. It's a tough one. I want to wait another week. Yeah. 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 It's not the right week for it. But again, see, Logan oh. Logan did the same thing, the Graham and Closey last week. It's like, it's a blessing in disguise, but at the same time, it really limits your ability to make a trade. It will come back and bite you, I think. And it can, yeah. Eventually it will. Double-edged sword, really. Can yep. Miss. Yeah. That, um, that last yeah. sentence is interesting, isn't it, D? I figure most bring in Kane McAuliffe next week. Sub, scored 16, played decent, 40% C-base this week for 42 against West Coast. Like, he's not, I wouldn't necessarily say he's a must-have, would you? No, he's not. No, no I think next week, next week. Yeah, people are probably focusing on that, that lack of midfield talent at the moment. And any sort of new name that comes up that's a midfielder, yeah. We're hoping that they're going to be the next one that really steps up there, I think, mate. But, yeah, look, I'm I'm not overly keen on him. I have spoken a little bit to Swizz and Abs, uh, the squad father coming down. Hope you're well, brothers. And, yeah, they're not huge on him. So I don't think if those two boys being Richmond fans are huge on him, then that's a little bit of a sign there. But I'll speak with those guys again during the week and give some more info in the stock market video Can about that one. Can I just add one, one but... thing very quickly, DR? Just Logan. One thing that leans me to say McAuliffe over Garcia is the fact that Garcia has a game this week, which he could get injured in. McAuliffe has the bye. You're less likely to get injured in the bye, but knowing Carlton, just like how Carlton plays, half our blokes get injured on the training track anyway. Richmond has a curse at the training track as well, so <laughs> you never know. They're just going to fall in like flies at the moment all across the league. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one at the moment, isn't it? But uh, yeah, Logan... All the best of luck, buddy. Hope it no goes way. well, mate. Uh, next one is from our man, Ian. G'day, E. How are you, mate? What are your plans with Jackson? I can boost in Marshall this week. Yeah, I think we've already had no. this discussion as well, boys. So, uh, look, we're keen to hold on for him for another week, mate, just to see how he looks like with Shrek as owners. But at the same time, do you know what? You're getting potentially the, I'll probably say R2 for the year, a solid keeper, He'll average a ton more than Jackson, in my opinion, 
um, from now until the end of the season. So it really does depend on what your projections are. But personally, I just want to get a week of data with Jackson just to give me an idea whether or not he can be that forward keeper. Um, but if you're not interested in Jackson as a keeper and you were always looking to trade, something we did mention before as well, ideally traded last week, but this is probably the week to trade if you want to make a little bit of coin on him. So uh, agree with that, boys? Think we pretty much covered that one before, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Beautiful. Good on Ian. Thanks, mate. Uh, <laughs> very close to the edge here. End here, boys. <laughs> and I'm getting close to the edge with these trades I'm making. <laughs> Uh, Supercoach's life. Hey, buddy. Probably the most important question for most of us. How does one keep the better half happy? <laughs> I haven't read this. I've just read it as I'm going. I heard you guys sniggering at it before. During Supercoach season, maybe Spills could share some insights. Spills? You're a relationship oh. expert now, mate. <laughs> look, look far from it. I'm pretty fortunate. Yeah, she's very cruisy, but it is quite funny when we're like watching – tv or something we're watching a movie and like i'd be on my phone and like she's like oh what are you, what are you up to like i'd yeah she'd see super coach open she'd just be like yeah of course see you always on it like she yeah she knows it's all i do so um i guess she sort of backed me in so i i'm lucky i've i've met a good one there and she knows the ritual she knows the podcast is on every tuesday night so um yeah she always says good night to me around seven hope you have a good potty Aww. so it's just become a, a nice sort of routine. So, but I can see how one would get frustrated with that because yeah, it does take up a lot of your time. And um, yeah, some yeah, some certain. Oh, oh she. I'll, I'll tell you this, boys. Quick, quick little story. But we're having a really good night a couple of weeks ago. We we're watching a movie and just yeah, it was just a really I nice day night. Okay, and then it was. Okay. That's all right then. Keep it. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I Keep thought. Keep it PG, mate. Yeah, we're going somewhere somewhere else here. From <laughs> I was okay, going PG, so. but. Yeah, um, okay. DR's mind lives in the gutter <laughs> rent free. So thanks, DR. Now nah, we're watching the footy. Madge Long supporter she was, gather around. But this was the Libba game and oh, no. when I trade him out. So our day night was kind of ruined by my petty mood of Jeez. seeing a 150 from Libba after I'd trade him out the following week. I was spewing, so yeah, Spills, it does Spills, have its mate, ups that, and downs. That's really your fault for watching a player that you just traded out. You never that's the that's the number one rule of super coach. You never you never watch the next game. Oh, we're watching the cats, mate. She's a Geelong supporter, so it's one of those things where it just a came lose, lose, lose lose situation. It was a lose for uh, me anyway. Exactly I'll tell you what, right. can I just add to that? Um so me and my missus, we we're going on one year next week. Um, Congratulations! She That's watched. Nice. She's a she's a religious watch of the podcast. She, had, I'm being dead set. I've really? taught her all that. I've taught her how to do a captaincy loophole. She doesn't oh. have a team. <laughs> That's the dream, she mate. She if knows I what a get my partner to do is. that. Oh. <laughs> she knows. She knows about Tim English. She actually asked me when I did my team review, "Where's Tim English?" Because I just kept Ooh. talking nonsensical about him last year. <laughs> last Very year. good. On to it. Absolutely. Um, Attention to details, yeah. huh? That's good. That is, that is. So to keep them happy, just, just teach them the game, I reckon. Maybe, I know why I've got, um, we got our good mate, James Doughty. He runs his, um, he's got his wife's team and I reckon his wife beats him half the time. She's good. And then, and then, and then James says, oh, I forgot to set his wife's team. Very <laughs> convenient. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bibi. He's an character, mate. No, Janet, <laughs> on with you, mate. So, uh, Lise, Lise actually plays super coach. And the way to keep her happy, well, uh, <laughs> I did talk her out of starting Josh Treacy this year as a little bit of a pod. <laughs> no. And uh, she actually started Massimo. She said, what about oh. this Massimo fella? I like the name. And I said, go with Massimo. If you look, anyone over Treacy, literally Josh anyone Tracy. over Josh Treacy. And uh, she was pretty happy with that advice, mate. But the other thing I'd say is, Try not to look. I'd love to watch every footy match, but maybe the the matches where, you know, it's obviously not your team and you've mainly only got one player or maybe two playing in there, maybe skip that game and just stick to, like, for me, it's like the Freo games where you got, like, Ryan, Dogger, Fife and all these sort of fellas. Maybe stick to the most important games, mate, and uh, give, her a, give her a bit of your other spare time, mate, instead of uh, all football stuff, mate. But, yeah, certainly no experts here, mate, but uh, all the best of luck. And, guys, we've got one more. For the week. So we got through this in pretty good time, I think. It's from Peter Pete. I'm not going to pronounce this, mate, because I may need to roll the tongue a little bit, and I can't do that. 
But thank you very much for your question, my man. Actually, Spills, give this a crack very quickly, mate, because what's what's the guy that you could pronounce that that footy player? Bosser for that's oh, a for, Archie, Archie, Archie. 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 Yeah, right. It gives me biggie vibes getting burnt by him. The Joffa's like <sighs> nephew or something. You went from Collingwood to North. What? Atsu Bosser. His nephew. I think it is, isn't it? His nephew or something. Jeez. Or, or some oh, relation. Bloke. Bossa Falagi. Atsu Bossa for Bossa Falagi. Oh, oh, there you go. All right. Give this one a go, Spills. Peter. Um Jeez, you're right. I think of like you're right there. I think of like Novak Djokovic with the DJ. So I'm I'm assuming oh, it's pronounced Jordan. similar to that. Jordic? Yeah. Jordic. Jo- yeah. Jordic. Peter Jordic. Yeah. Croatian or Peter Jordic. Team Is it Peter Jordy? Well done there, Spills. Uh, you, you, yeah, very good with your phonics and phonetics here, mate. Hey, guys. Hey, uh, here's a good idea. Yeah. J- Joffa is Boston of Alagi's grandma's sister. I, the more you know. Is that, yeah, well, that right. I knew there was a connection oh, there, mate. There was some Jesus. sort of a connection there that I knew, but um, oh, I yeah. wasn't quite sure poor there. Bloke. Mate, but, um, Oh, I tell you, yeah, poor fella, mate. All right, Pete, we're going to finish with this one, mate. Uh, nothing to do with Joffa. has got nothing to do with Pete, by the way. We don't want to be, yeah, talking yeah. about Pete and Joffa in the same sentence. So we, we do apologize for that, buddy. Hey, guys, is it a good idea to go all out and find a way to trade in Heaney this week? Or do I bite the bullet on fading him? He's the worst answer. I'm going to show the trade. What are the trades? What would the trades be? <laughs> all right. Um, Whatever. Just get well, him we in. Can't. <laughs> you can't end on him. Ryan shoes. Oh. Nothing from the defense, probably. No. Probably being McKercher, Carroll, well, he's got McKercher, and a forward. Carroll. And a. I'd go like. I'd get a five. Five? I'd go McKercher to like, obviously, Graham or like rookie type, and then see if you can get five up to Heaney. But I think you, even then, you, I'd boost for him. You've got to get Heaney in. Have to. Is it got Graham? So it hasn't got Graham. Go right, two so down, please. one up. You got to get Heaney. You can't would you? Him. Would you just so we just so Pete can get Isaac Heaney? Would you say, for example, go down to Graham, go early on Biggie, and then up to Heaney? Would you be happy to use a boost involving Biggie if it got your Heaney? I think yeah. this would be the he, rare case where you could because okay. you can't. He fits that category. Dear. You yep. can't not have Heaney. You just can't. He's the worst antipod ever. He's everyone's got him now. You don't want to miss out. You, you either don't get Heaney now, or you hide behind the couch for the next six weeks before they're by. Oh, it's so true, isn't it? So true. Yeah, mate. We're saying go all out and get Isaac in your side, mate. You'll enjoy Super Coach a lot yes, more, buddy. That's the thing. You got to enjoy it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's what the game's all about, mate. That's what yeah. it's all about. Uh, but, guys, thank you very much for all of your questions, as always. Uh, always an absolute pleasure for that. Now, boys, we are going to finish up very, very quickly. We will absolutely turbo through this because I think we've already alluded to what some of our trades are looking like for this week. I'll start. I'm in the middle while I'm talking here. So, at the moment, I'm only looking at locking in one, and then it's going to be a question mark about Combin. But I think the obvious one for me is out McKercher, in Will Graham, and I bank 360k doing that. I've talked about my future targets, and I think it's really important to try to bank as much as I can now. A big question mark for me is whether or not I bring in Charlie Combin. Uh, do I bring him in for a Cadman? Do I go for a Clark type? Many options there for me, but the one lock trade I've got is certainly McKercher to Graham. Uh, Spilsy. Yourself, mate. Do you want to quickly take us uh, rapidly through your trades, mate? And we can uh, yeah, they, uh, yeah. Captain say goodbye. Yeah, well, eight points between Clark and McKercher, so pretty straightforward there. Oh, but, yeah, as I, as I discussed, oh, boys. Wow, yeah. Shh. What's that? Eight points eight between point Clark between and McKercher. Between two rookies. Jeez. Yeah. I oh, know. Yeah. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> And boys, just quickly, have I gone? Is my screen gone black? Just quickly. We can static, hear, mate, right? but you are frozen like an absolute statue, mate. Like yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. As long as, as, long as, as you can hear me. Yeah, as long as you can hear me well, I'll fix All that. All fine, anyway. mate. Yep. 
But yeah, obviously we talk, spoke about how's this trade looks good in theory, but it stuffs me up on the mid bench. Like, do you really want Sanders and Graham on the bench and then a donut in defence? So probably looking at more. Hopefully, a hold McKercher for one week as a loophole for Sanders, and then get rid of him next week. But if he's if he's named, I think I've got to yeah pull something out of the trick bag. So, but either way. Double downgrade, and then yeah, as you can see, 184k in the bank. That's the absolute minimum. So if I go house instead of Clark, that's 200 plus. So that'll that'll really help. Going one up, one down, and merit next week, and still having 100k in the in the bank. So that's going to really set me up. So I'm happy with that. And my captains, I'm looking at a little bit of a a little bit of a revenge VC. I'm going to VC Bont on Thursday night. I know it's a risky one, but you look at his previous history against St Kilda. They they lead they bleed a lot of points. The Saints Bont's due for a good one. You don't see players as, at his quality go go bad, particularly seventies anyway. Two weeks in a row ever. So I'm going to back in the big foul and hopefully he can get me over the line. And then yeah, I, I don't know who my captain is yet. Probably Heaney against Gold Coast. I think so. Um, is that who he has? I haven't even checked. Yes. I'm pretty Gold sure. Coast. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he can't go too <laughs> wrong there. But I, it's it's going to be one of those weeks where a one twenty five would would Just cut the mustard, it, even a one twenty. Yeah. I mean, I'm not fast. Absolutely agree. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Janet, before you get into your trades and captains, mate, I forgot my captains. I'm actually going steal, so I'm going to bypass Bond. I just I can't deny steal in his current form. I don't think the dogs will tag either. So I think steal into Sir Isaac for me. But I'm hoping, as you mentioned, spills. Oh, just get a 125 plus and lock it in. Be safe, mate. First game of the week. But it's it's nerve-wracking. I can't put like coming into the season, imagine saying you've got Jack the option of BC Steel or Bond. And I'm going steel. I can't even believe that I'm saying it. But uh that's probably the way that I'm I'm looking at this week. We obviously don't have the visuals for the captains, but make sure that you do check out the third man app and they'll be available uh during the week as well. Yeah. Janet, trades and captains for you, brother, before we uh call it an end for the week, mate. Yes, yeah, so I walked I walked through the logic behind bringing in Marshall this week. He's who my he's who my VC is on at the moment. I just Ooh. really fancy the matchup. Uh on dogs debut. give up. Tim English gives up, I think, 12 points extra on top of the player's average um in general this season. So he's given up. So for instance, Marshall is projected. To score 127 or above, really, around that range, which I think is uh, really handy. Um, otherwise, it's going to be Will Graham. If Colby McKerch is named, then I'll probably switch out McKerch and Clark. I just don't want to have to deal with the cash loss over the next six weeks, especially if what your boys, your boys are saying that um, his midfield role isn't just really helpful uh, to him. In terms of a VC and C, it's either Steele or um, Marshall into Butters. Um, Butters just ahead of Heaney at the moment for me. Butters at the MCG went 175 against, albeit against Richmond, but big matchup against Collingwood. They lowered their colours last year against Collingwood at the G. I think this matchup is really prime for Butters. Um, and just something real small tidbit on Bont. The last four games he's played without living now, just a quick one. Do you boys reckon Bont has a better average? Or a worse average without Bond, uh, without Liver in the team. Oh, I I'm couldn't say, tell you. I'm going to say better. Better. Worse. Spills, just real one. All right, so it's last worse. four games. Make them more accountable. Last four games, you lose the guy feeding the ball out to the big to the big man. One twenty two, ninety three, ninety four, seventy six is his last wow. four games without Liver in the team. And so that, along with potentially a tag, we saw Durham do it effectively against the Bond. Um, you got well, Windhager. A bit now, Jana. You got Steel. It's just, it's just something to consider, mate. I just, I prefer yep. the Saints boys in this matchup, just because. Yes, Bont as a captain should bounce back, but I'd much prefer no, to be no seen if, if Little was in the team. That's a Good great. Point. I had no idea about Janet. That's some nice oh, research. He's good in here, mate. He's just, he's, he's so good. The oh, professor, all play professor. Just Absolutely, that's why we missed a great man spills. Uh, we've been around the ship, have mate. Thought but... of that. I would never have thought of that, but I have now. So, well, we'll mate, maybe they say Haney. 
I don't it, know. it really does depend those feels like you could you could easily make a case that he's the captain he's definitely going to bounce back after that rubbish they performed last week so it's because it, it really does go hand in hand because we saw maxi bad loss in round zero bounces back round one against the bulldogs the best captains in the league perform better in the week after their team loses in a bad game coach yeah. is under the pump as well coach is under the pump exactly yeah well, we'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. likes Bevo now. <laughs> if 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 Bonte doesn't like Bevo, he might just have another one of those games. Yeah, exactly. Right. Get him, get him exactly out the door. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm due for a bad captain, though. I mean, my average is crazy. We should be listening I, to you, Spills. What are we doing here? We're we're not the ones that should be giving advice. You should be. John, if you're the president of the captaincy <laughs> corner, what would I know? I'm just I'm just someone that doesn't five average. Yeah, it is. I did the I did yeah. the average calculator. That's insane. Yeah, I've got it. Very nice. I've got it on my Twitter actually, so, like somewhere from last week. But the max score on one thirty nine was by far my lowest behind. Oh, I think it was no, it. not by far. I think Sarong went one forty one against North. Oh, but he's flexing now. Di isn't he? Cut him. Cut Disney. him off. Yeah, time to cut this off. <laughs> time to cut this off for, uh, I don't have much to flex about on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, I am Scott. third on the podium for total points, oh. but I am first with captains. So, yeah, you've got to have something, boys. Oh, yeah, biggest it. pipes I've heard uh, as well, skills apparently, <laughs> mate. Uh, a couple of days on the dating app and just, you know, just... Yeah. You know what, Spills? Spills, I'll, I'll give you something. You should bring in Mitchell Hinge for the vibes. Oh, Hinge. How good... <laughs> I, I want to bring in. I've got a mate that I work with, right? I think, I think it, it, it just went over, his <laughs> it went over his head. He had he has no idea what I just said, does he? No, can you, yeah. What, 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 are you, what, are you, what are you on about, Mitchell Hinge? <laughs> oh, you idiot. Oh, my God. The penny's <laughs> dropped. <laughs> oh, that's terrible, Janice. That, that went straight over my head. It was so yeah, bad. It took, it took you a long, long time to figure that one out, Spills. It is getting um, late, boys. Look, I've it got is a head late. cold and it's ten o'clock. Like, I'm cooked. Yeah, oh, you that was a boat terrible, boat. Janet. Yeah. That just went straight over my head. That's a good way to finish it, I reckon. <laughs> uh, that is, boys. So, uh, look, Janet, great to have you back, brother. Great to have you back in the country. I'm sure that the whole community is feeling the same way, mate. Good to see you're going really well with your super coach as well, brother. Uh, Spilsy. <laughs> Great to have you on as always, mate. Uh, Don's in fine form at the moment. You're in fine form just in overall life as well, mate. So uh, <laughs> good to talk with you as always. I'll chat with you boys during the week. And uh, thanks for watching, guys, or listening uh, on Spotify if you're on that pl platform at the moment. Always a pleasure chatting with everyone here. I'll be back with the stock market video this week. And then we'll look forward to joining you again next week for the round six episode. So thanks again, guys. Take care. We'll see you soon in the next one. Cheers, up, bye. Boys. Fuck, I didn't see that Mitchell coming Hinge. at the end there. <laughs>